West End Mazda, Australia's oldest Mazda dealer. The brilliant 2016 Mazda 2 Neo Hatch and now Mazda 2 Neo Sedan from just 16990 drive away. Amazing value. Or upgrade to the max and drive it away for only 19690. West End Mazda, 17 times Mazda Master Dealer. 590 Church Street, North Parramatta and 106 Sunny Holt Road in Blacktown. See our e-specials at westendmazda.com.au.
iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. West End Mazda, Australia's oldest Mazda dealer. The brilliant 2016 Mazda 2 Neo Hatch and now Mazda 2 Neo Sedan from just $16,990 drive away. Amazing value. Or upgrade to the max and drive it away for only $19,690. West End Mazda, 17 times Mazda Master Dealer. 590 Church Street, North Parramatta and 106 Sunny Holt Road in Blacktown. See our e-specials at westendmazda.com.au. live broadcast of one of the premier events in the iRacing Australia New Zealand community. It's the All-Star Shootout presented by West End Mazda, the fourth edition of this fantastic tournament style event. We're here at Road Atlanta Short, where it all started. My name is Reese Gardner. And joining me in the commentary box is Cameron Dance. Cam, this is a this is gonna be a great night. Yeah, it definitely is. It's gonna be Quite an exciting little event we've got here tonight with the interesting way that these guys have to deal with it. Not a very common sight for a lot of these guys. So it's going to be an interesting bit of an event with the fact that we've got the likes of a Joe Clap and it being a team event, more or less. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the Joe Lap, of course, is the club circuit pit lane, which incidentally was the original pit lane of this circuit. So it's going to be very, very short races in this tournament and um, drivers will be divided into heats and on one of the laps, they have to take a joker. So spices things up a bit. And um, if you've watched previous iterations of this event, then you'll know that 
the exit of the Joker lap, there's no right of way. It's a complete free for all. So some incidents might happen when drivers exit the Joker lap and come back onto the racing line at the exit of that super fast turn one here at Road Atlanta. Well, I'll tell you what, Cam, uh, looking at um, the field, it's an incredibly strong field of drivers here in this fourth edition of the All-Star Shootout. Having a look at um, the first team on the card. Yeah, they probably you've probably got the predictions right for where the team's going to finish and what sort of strengths both drivers are. I think McMillan could probably finish within the top 10, but yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, we certainly should. And um, well, as, um, as per usual with these tournament formats, the Joker lap and any penalties that might be given out by race control, of course, one of the penalties is uh, disqualification from the race if they cause a turn one incident, or if they jump the start, they have to do an extra joker lap, so...
past. And I, I certainly think that, you know, if, if there's a penalty for somebody else somewhere along the way, they could definitely get up there. Yeah, definitely. They're both quite good drivers. So I'd say they'll do fairly well and we'll hopefully see them up the pointy end. Yep, race on Oz. Next team that we're looking at, one of the big guns, Redback Racing Team. Aaron Lee and Joseph Fabian representing RRT. And uh, Aaron Lee, well, he's got a huge amount of history. He is the first individual champion of the All-Star Shootout. And, well, he's he's certainly been up there in subsequent ones since. I, I believe he might have won another one at some point down the line. I can't quite remember. Memory is failing me at the moment. But Aaron Lee, in terms of one lap pace, one of the best drivers you'll find in the OzNZ community. And he's partnered with Joseph Fabian for this all-star shootout, which, um, well, I, I've raced against Joseph Fabian before, and he's certainly nothing to sneeze at himself. Yeah, definitely. They've got quite a strong combination here tonight, so... I do expect them to do quite well. You've predicted them to be third, so I wouldn't actually be surprised if they can get a podium finish. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Aaron and Joseph can do. Yep, Redback Racing Team. I predicted them to finish third in the team standings tonight, but of course that can change. The next team, another team that we've seen quite a bit of, uh, especially in V8 Scops, Synergy Sim Racing. With four cars in the top ten at the Phillip Island 500, they're one of the they're quickly becoming a true force to be reckoned with, and they're represented by two of their best drivers here, Brenton Hobson and Wayne Burke. Um, of course, after Wayne Burke's uh, performance at the Phillip Island 500 on Sunday, I, uh, I I think I might have to revise that rating that I've given him and the predicted finish, but. Of course, there's so many variables in this event that you can never really say for sure, but I think Synergy Sim Racing will certainly be a factor as this event goes on throughout the night. Yeah, definitely. As you said, with now the Phillip Island and 500 completed and the results that Synergy got in that event, it's you've kind of <laughs> left it a bit, um, done it a bit early. But um, yeah, they're definitely going to be a strong combination, I reckon, and could definitely well threat to be in the top five. Yep, they certainly could. Synergy Sim Racing right there. Next team down the line, Talk Inc. Racing. A team that we're very familiar with. Of course, our director Jay is a member of these guys. And, well, they've shown their worth in previous editions of this event. Mitchell McLeod and Hayden Dodman, of course, on their day can be excellent drivers. Truly a force to be reckoned with. But um, some things might not go their way, of course. Mitch and Hayden, they have uh, they have huge amounts of pace, uh, depending on the day of the week, I suppose. And um, they they do like jumping into events without doing much practice, and they end up doing all right anyway. So I wonder if they've uh, taken the same attitude for this one. I certainly think that they will do well in this event. Yeah, I would not be surprised if they've done zero practice. It would not surprise me at all. Oh, Hayden has done Hayden has done one lap apparently, according to our director. So they have actually put some practice in, and Mitch is apparently not in the lobby yet. So, right. but anyway, so it's yeah, both of them are actually not too bad of pedalers to be honest. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how well they can do, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're up the pointy end as they've been in the previous editions yep for sure and don't forget hayden won every heat that he competed in last time out in the legends car at suzuka east that was um truly an event to behold so uh keep a look out for hayden Dominic and mitchell mcleod i haven't um put my predicted finish for them particularly high but once again that can change but you know the the next couple of teams we're going to look at they're certainly going to be up there or thereabouts. TTL Esports, Josh Rogers and Jake Maloney. Now, Josh Rogers, I've predicted, is going to be the winner of the All-Star Shootout tonight. So um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to being proven wrong by someone like, uh, like Aaron Lee, for example. But, I mean, Rogers, 
for the last couple of years, he's been one of the drivers to watch in the Oz NZI racing scene, and he's just he he's got crushing pace and crushing race pace as well. Jake Maloney, of course, nothing to sneeze at. He uh, has he is a race winner, a proven race winner in Porsche Carrera Cup Australia, and yeah, I I certainly think that they're both going to be up there tonight. Yeah, definitely. TTL of esports have definitely brought the big guns out tonight with there being Jake and Josh racing tonight. Obviously, Josh being a very, very good driver and Jake having finished actually every single lap in the V8 Scops season so far this year. So, yeah, I would not be surprised if these two are up the front and dominate the night. Yep, for sure. And the final team, we're going to take a look at the final team uh, in this lineup of the All Star Shootout, the tenth team, Trans Tasman Racing. This time presented by a couple of their newer drivers, driving Apex Replicas liveried Ford Mustangs tonight. Sam Blacklock and Emily Jones. I think uh, both of them. This is their first go in the All Star Shootout. As uh, out on track at the moment, we see um, a couple of drivers doing a test run just to demonstrate how the race works. But Sam Blacklock and Emily Jones. Both drivers with a huge amount of pace and, um, you know, being development drivers, they can be a bit rough around the edges, but this year in particular, they've proven themselves forces to be reckoned with in the V8 Supercar Online Premiere Series, and I think it'll be much the same tonight. Yeah, definitely. Both Emily and Sam have actually come quite a long way since joining Trans Tasman Racing and being part of the Rising Stars part of the team so yeah it'll be interesting to see how well they go tonight and i'd reckon they'll probably do quite well yep for sure and i think uh trans tasman racing um i did predict them to finish fifth in the team's standings but in this sort of event you can't discount anyone at the end of the day these are just numbers the real proof in the pudding will be in the racing tonight uh, and I think this will take the better part of three hours. We're going to be here for a very long time, Cam, because this event is manually run by uh, by Clint Smith. And uh, it does take a lot of coordination to set up a lot of cooperation between race control and the drivers. So it's uh, it's certainly a unique event format, but one that uh, every iRacing season we look forward to. Yeah, definitely. It's always a... Good little event to look forward to and have in the community to get everybody together and have a bit of fun and but also be competitive at the same time. So, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a long one, but it'll be definitely an enjoyable one. It certainly will. Well, we've gone through all of the teams that are going to be competing tonight. Let's uh, just take a look for a brief moment at the event format. So the All-Star Shootout. For those of you who have watched previous editions of it, it is a tournament-style event done in heats, and um, there's going to be a first uh, a first run of heats after that. Points are tallied, and then uh, it's a bit of a knockout format. Less and less drivers competing in subsequent heats until a champion is decided in one final shootout race. Every race is four laps long, with one joker lap. Drivers are going to start four abreast across the start-finish line here at Road Atlanta and manually controlled by race control. So once races are concluded after four laps, of course, they have to do a joker lap at some point between the end of lap one and the start of lap four. Then uh, that will be decided and the next heat will go out. So that's uh, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. We've had... Uh, We've seen this kind of format used before in previous shootouts, but it doesn't get old. No, it definitely doesn't. It's always a exciting format to have, somewhat similar to Rallycross in some extent, but yeah, it's always a good little event, as I said earlier, and can always bring up some interesting results and exciting racing. Yes, of course. And um, once again, if any drivers have been found to jump the start, They'll be advised by race control that they need to complete two joker laps. So that's really going to put your uh, <laughs> put your event in jeopardy if you uh, accidentally drop the clutch a little bit too early in these Mustangs. And of course, if an on-track incident happens in turn one, for example, race control may advise red light, in which case racing ceases and the drivers must go around again. But heat one is currently on screen 
We're now into the shoot session. And heat one is going to be Connor McCluskey Young for Progression Racing Australia from gate one, Hayden Dobman from gate two, gate three, Stephen Lattimore for Race on Oz, and Sinji Sim Racing's Wayne Burke starting from gate four. Cam, who's your pick for this one to start the night off? I'm going to be a little bit obvious here and say Hayden Dorman, considering he's won all his heats in the last event. So, but the, you will have to look out for Wayne Burke possibly. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who can actually take this one out. It certainly will. I, um, I wouldn't say no to the possibility of Hayden Dorman winning this. As you said, he does have quite a bit of history in this uh, event. Won every single heat that he started at Suzuka last season but i don't know if uh, if he ends up making a mistake you know one jump start and that's all over in which case i think someone like wayne burke could really capitalize yeah definitely well as the drivers are going around on the warm-up lap um let's take a look at this circuit road atlanta's short layout so a lot of us are familiar with road atlanta but um this layout cuts off uh, a big part of the circuit and replaces it with a long uphill right-hand sweeper that brings drivers onto the start fin onto sorry the back straight after the opening S's. So it's an incredibly short lap here, and towards the end of the lap after the chicane, if the drivers go straight on as opposed to going right to go through the last turn, they will enter the club pits and do their Joker lap. Now, of course iRacing does automatically net you a penalty if you go through that pit lane at speed, so race control, Mr. Smith, is uh, at the ready to clear black flags for anyone who uses that, so the event will run smoothly as planned. So the drivers have lined up now on the grid. Four abreast here on the start-finish line here at Road Atlanta. McCluskey Young, Dodman, Lattimore, and Burke. The revs are rising, waiting for the green flag. And away they go. Looks like Good Dobbin and Burke. Him. Whoa, what happened to Burke? I think Burke missed a gear. Quite possibly could have, because that's a shocking start. Certainly is. He was even with Dodman up until uh, the time came to shift into second gear. But Dodman with a big lead out of turn one here on lap one. Now they want to take it nice and easy here. They don't want to be too bashy crashy in these events because Clint Smith will come down like a ton of bricks if you end up uh, messing up another driver's event. McCluskey Young doing very well to hold off second from Stephen Lattimore. Wayne Burke stuck in last place at the moment. They got a big braking zone coming up though, so this is an opportunity to make some moves. The Ford Mustang FR500S has ABS, so you can push the brake pedal quite hard, but of course it's very heavy and it's got the aerodynamic properties of an average brick, <laughs> so they'll have a hard time of it. It looks like three drivers going for the Joker here. Lattimore, uh, the only one who's missed it. Yep, so a little bit of a demonstration here of the event format going at full crank through the club pits and then taking as wide a line as possible using the pit exit and out they go onto the circuit once again that's their joker lap done for the race dodman mccluskey young and wayne burke so now it's uh, flat out racing to the end for them now this is a uh, this is a big call um strategy wise if you take your joker lap on lap one you can often come out with a bit of an advantage if um if you're fast enough but mccluskey young almost going off the track as they uh, come onto the back straight just keeping an eye on Lattimore to see if he decides to take his joker lap on lap two nope he is electing to stay out once again I'd say you'll probably do it later in the race on the last lap. Yeah, he'll have to do it on this lap. So we can expect Lattimore in. Any second now. Dodman, once again, with a uh, very commanding lead. Looks like Burke is having a little bit of trouble finding his way past McCluskey. 
Yeah, he is. He looked to try and make a move at turn one, but didn't quite get it done. If there's anywhere to put a move on someone, it's down at the chicane. So keep an eye out for Wayne Burke there. The Stephen Lattimore out onto the back straight. And Dodman is creeping up on him already. He's he's within sight, so I don't know if Lattimore will be able to hold on to a podium position here. Yeah, don't think so as he goes in for his Joker lap there, but yeah, it's going to be close when he comes out. Certainly will. Well, Hayden Dodman is going to go past. McCluskey, Young, and Burke are going to go past as well. So, looks like Lanimal's going to come out in last place. So, still staying on the battle between Burke and McCluskey Young. This is the closest battle on track at the moment. I don't think Dodman or Lattimore will be a factor in this. So as they come out onto the back straight, Wayne Burke will be wanting to line up a move here on McCluskey. If he can get close enough. McCluskey's already in the middle of the circuit trying to cover him. Oh, that's Ooh. very close. Yeah, big, uh, <laughs> big mid corner grip. Whoa, oh, Burke. big sideways as well. Yeah, wow. Wayne Burke almost spinning it, but Hayden Dobman is going to come across the line to win Heat 1. The All-Star Shootout 4 presented by West End Mazda. McCluskey Young finishing a very good second. Burke third. Lattimore finishing in fourth place. That was a fairly good heat to start the night off. Good demonstration of the order of operations throughout the night. So now the drivers will be making their way back to the pits. No double points for anyone in this race. That is one thing that we did forget to mention. Drivers can elect to have one of their heats count for double points. They can choose, but they have to notify race control before the heat starts. So it's a, it's another strategy game, this double points business, because if you decide to go for double points in a heat and then you you do badly in it, then well, you've squandered that opportunity, haven't you? Yeah, unfortunately. And that's kind of one of the games these guys have to play. The, they've got to think about whether they go for double points or whether they hold it off for a later opportunity. And that's one of the things that actually makes it quite interesting because should someone make a mistake and end up at the back of the field, then those double points are pretty much useless. They certainly are. Well, Heat 2 is currently up on screen at the moment. Gate 1, Josh Rogers. Gate 2, Brady Myers. Brenton Hobson and Gate 3. And Aaron Lee starting from Gate 4. This is quite the field for Heat 2. Um, I can count uh, three of them, definite, uh, two of them, sorry, definitely um, could win this. Brenton Hobson and Brady Myers could definitely get in there if either Rogers or Lee make a mistake, but I think Rogers versus Lee is going to be one to watch in this one. Yeah, definitely. It's actually quite a stacked heat, this one. So I wouldn't be surprised if Josh actually does run away with it, although Aaron is there to possibly give him a good run for his money so it'll be interesting to see how this race goes yeah well the revs are rising for these guys at the moment waiting for the green flag from race control and away they go looks like myers has gotten whoa myers missed a oh, gear there that's, hobson that's close on oh, rogers has gone backwards as well oh yeah not good rogers currently in last place as they come into turn one and brenton hobson taking the lead in turn one what an excellent start from him. Have a look at Rogers, though, trying to go up the inside here. He's going to get by Brady Myers. Oh, a few connection issues by the looks of it. Yeah, that's uh, that's not what you want to see, but uh, Brenton Hobson, your current leader. Although so Rogers is coming. Yeah, negotiating lap one of four. Look, he's going to go to the inside through the sweeper. Lee just going wide, but... 
Now Lee is going to have the inside line for the chicane. Do they want to go side by side this early in the race? Whoa, Rogers! That was a me. That was a move and a half. Fortunately, uh, he didn't quite commit to it. Otherwise, I think he would have uh, <laughs> smashed into Lee as Rogers and Myers take their joker lap. Myers really closing up on Rogers there. So as they negotiate the joker lap, Myers is staying with Rogers very well here. He is, actually. Well, they come back onto the circuit now and have a look at the exit Myers has got. Ooh, oh, just about pushing Rogers here. Yeah. It looks like Rogers has got the edge on him through the S's. So meanwhile, oh, Brenton Hobson made a little bit of a mistake in the sweeper. Tiny bit of oversteer. That's a loss of traction. That's given Aaron Lee a little bit of blood to sniff. And he's going to go up the inside at the chicane. Hobson covers him, though. Oh, oh they the made contact. They've both gone around. Both around. Oh, no, Lee's held it, though. Ah, oh, what a shame. So that means that Hobson has effectively lost any chance he had of a win there. What a shame. Lee takes his joker. Yeah, that's really unfortunate that that's, ha that that's happened because that was actually looking like it was going to be a good battle there. So now Rogers is the leader of the race. I don't think it was very... It was a very wise move by Lee to do that because that's basically taken away his chances of challenging for the win. Yeah, it has, and you're always trying to gain maximum points in these sort of races, so... Yeah, it's sort of about risk management, but you've kind of got to do that with how equal it is between these cars. Myers, Myers off. is off the rose oh. with a big way. Yeah. Manages to hold it, though. Yeah, you're 100% right, Cam. I think, um, I think if Aaron had waited to put that move on Hobson until a later lap... It probably would have worked out better for both of them, but unfortunately, both of them have now lost out. So Roger's coming across the line to start the final lap. It looks like the field is pretty spaced out right now. Not much... Uh, not much action to call. But Roger's showing one of his big strengths, which is just putting down the fast times where it counts and staying out of trouble. So an absolutely clinical drive from Rogers. We, we didn't think that he would have much of a, of a chance after going backwards at the start, but here he is coming across the line to win Heat 2. With Brady Myers not too far behind and Aaron Lee in third. And Brenton Hobson, well, I think that's uh, a big what might have been for him. Very unfortunate for Hobbo crossing the line to finish in fourth place. So, I think that may or may not lie in the stewards' hands, that incident between Hobson and Lee. Depending on who they consider to be at fault, they can subtract points and even disqualify people from races. So, that may change at some point. We don't know. We'll see. So Heat 3, on screen at the moment, this is a very fast-moving event, so it's a bit rapid-fire. Heat 3, Dane Warren in Gate 1, Jake Maloney in Gate 2. And just in, the stewards have removed Aaron Lee from the results of that race for his contact with Brenton Hobson. No points for Aaron Lee, so Hobson gets points for third place.
Joseph yeah, Fabian in gate three and Scott Larnick in gate four. Sorry, Cam. Yeah, that's good that that's happened as it provides it a bit fear after that unfortunate incident. Certainly does. Well, this is another grid that uh, I've really been looking forward to uh, seeing tonight. Another field that um, has a lot of well-matched drivers. I think it's going to be close between all of these guys, but I think La either Larnack or Warren are my pick. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because it's actually quite a competitive heat, this one. So it'll be interesting to see who can actually take this out. You can put your TTL hat on, Cam. You want Jake to win, don't you? <laughs> Definitely do. But um, I'll be a little bit uh, <laughs> on, undecided and say it could possibly be Larnick or Warren as all, as both those drivers and Austin Maloney are all good drivers. So it'll be interesting to see who can come away with this one. Certainly will. Where they're negotiating the formation lap right now. Late afternoon conditions here. A 30 degree track, so... It's not uh, not too hot, not too cold. So this Mustang, it's a, it's a very different car to what we last raced at Road Atlanta in the All Star Shootout, which was the Radical SR8. I mean, both cars are V8 and rear wheel drive, but the Radical was a very aero dependent mid engined track machine with slick tires. This Mustang, it's basically a converted road car. It's got stiffened suspension, but it's still heavy. It's still soft. It's got the engine in the front. And it's got performance road tires on it. So it's a bit of a different beast to drive and a different beast to get off the line as well. As the revs rise for Heat 3 of the All-Star Shootout. Who's going to come out on top here? Looks to me as oh, though... Oh, it's got a horrible start, but it's yeah. like Maloney's possibly going to get the lead into turn one, being on the inside. Yep. Once again, that's something... That, whoa. Larnack. Better than me. Really. Yeah, Larnack going up the inside of Fabian. Oh, oh Fabian's my contact with the fence. Oh, and I don't, like. race control might red light that one. Yep, it looks like they have... So the drivers will have to make their way back around the circuit or escape, get a fresh car. And then a steward's decision will be made on that. So just reviewing that start, um, Warren demonstrated once again something that we've seen in all three heats so far. At least one driver has missed the gear change from first to second. The Mustang has a very finicky gearbox. It's not as sequential like um, like the other cars that have been used in the All-Star Shootout. The Mustang is a full-on H-pattern clutch um, manual shift to uh, actuate the gears. So it's got uh, an interesting... An interesting gearbox behavior to deal with. Sometimes it might not slick straight into gear. You gotta watch out for that. Make sure that it's actually in the next gear before you release the clutch and put the throttle down. I think a couple of drivers are quickly finding that in the heat of the moment, it can make or break your race. Yeah, definitely. And that's probably one of the things a lot of these guys don't haven't actually done for a while is used an h pen and Larnax in the pits so i think that's probably due to being removed so Larnack has been removed that's interesting yeah i suppose the decision from the stewards was that he moved over a bit too soon for that turn but we're green once again and this time and maloney is the one that start. loses out yeah, it is yeah, I think Warren's figured out the gearbox of the Mustang now off the start. He's going to have the inside line into turn one. Maloney's still right on his bumper, though. A little bit of a push there from Maloney as well. But they stay nice and easy through turn three and down through the S's. Mustang bouncing off 
those high curbs. Fabian's hanging on to the to the rear of these guys. Wondering if he will elect to take his Joker on lap one. Just get it out of the way and uh, do some clean laps to take it to the finish. Could quite possibly. Although like Warren's Warren going to take it, and so it is. Is it? Yep. So that promotes Jack Maloney into the lead briefly. So Dame Warren and Joseph Fabian negotiating the Joker lap. Looks like both of them have got through cleanly. Looks like Warren's managed to gap Fabian a little. He has, actually, so that might help him later on. Yeah, we'll see if Jake Maloney can continue to put in fast times without the added help of Dane Warren being in front of him for a bit of a draft down the back stretch. So through the chicane, Maloney goes. Will he elect to take his joker now? No, it looks like he's saving it for the final opportunity. So he comes across the line to start lap three. Not much of a battle to speak of between these guys right now. Fabian has fallen back from Warren a fair bit in this last lap. He has, by the looks of it. Just probably not quite got the pace to keep up with Warren. Yeah, of course, Dane Warren. Very good driver. Has the ability to put the hammer down when it matters. Fabian, of course, no slouch, but... Obviously, he seems to be having a couple of problems with that Mustang at the moment. So Maloney's going to come into the chicane at the bottom of the hill as we speak. And we will see him take the Joker at, at this final opportunity as he comes around to start the last lap. Question is, will he be able to hold off Dane Warren? He's just come over the top of the hill now. It's going to be close. Yeah, it certainly is, but Warren's going to get him right there. So Warren into the lead. Maloney not too far behind, but looks like Warren's gapped him sufficiently. He's done the fastest lap of the night as Dame Warren. Uh, a 102.336. That's half a second faster than Roger's fastest time. Very impressive. Yeah, it is actually. So, could possibly actually see Dane making it through to possibly the final and actually being quite competitive, actually. For sure. Well, Dane Warren's got a substantial lead here over Jake Maloney. And this is going to be a nice cruise to victory for the All Star Motorsports driver, putting some good points on the table for ASM. Dane Warren negotiating the final turn to take the win in Heat 3 of the All-Star Shootout. Good drive. Nice. Yep, with Maloney second and Fabian third. Yep, and unfortunately, Scott Larnack, um, Evolution Racing Team's night has not gotten off to a good start. They will come away with a grand total of zero points so far. We still have Bo Albert yet to compete in a Heat, so that may change for them very soon. Yes, it will, because he's up next. Yes, he certainly is. As the drivers do their in-lap heat four up on screen at the moment, Sam Blacklock from Gate 1 for Trans-Tasman Racing, Thomas McMillan, the second All-Star Motorsports driver in a row to start a heat from Gate 2, with Bo Albert doing the same thing for Evolution Racing Team, and Sean Thompson making Pro Force Racing's first appearance in the night's events. So having a look at this field, I think it's going to be tight between Albert and Blacklock for sure. McMillan and Thompson though. Thompson has history on his side. 
He helped uh, Pro Force Racing to a convincing team's victory at the first All-Star shootout at this very track. So he could certainly be a factor. Thomas McMillan, seen him race in the V8, haven't seen much of him outside of that, so not too sure of the kind of judgment I could make on him there. We'll see. Yes, indeed we will. It's going to be interesting. I reckon it'll be between Blackhawk, McMillan and Albert, although, like I said, you can't really count out Sean Thompson. So it's going to be interesting to see who can actually take this one out. Yes, indeed. Well, having a look at um, the gates, the gate format, it looks like um, gate four on the outside of the circuit hasn't really come away with the best getaways. It's been the, the middle two lanes that I think have seen the majority of good starts so far. So especially later on in the night, drivers will be keeping track of what gates produce the best launches. And when it comes time for the later part of the event where drivers can choose what gate they start from, that'll be a factor. But Blacklock, McMillan, Albert and Thompson line up and rev their engines and dump the clutch. Looks like Albert missed the start slightly. Look at the start that McMillan's got. Straight and away Black on Blacklock's Lock. been left for dead as well. Yep. Once again, the shift from first to second, taking another victim, but McMillan leading into turn one. A fantastic start from the All-Star Motorsports driver. Yeah, Thompson's also got a good start as well, so he's currently sitting second. So Albert and Blacklock will have to work through the field here if they want to get to the front. Yeah, but have a look at Albert. He's already right on the back of Thompson. Very confident in the throttle his Ford Mustang and these guys are super close this is this is I think one of the closest fields we've seen all night is Blacklock going up the inside of Albert onto the straight but he's looks like pretty much got it done actually oh no yeah. Albert's oh. gonna come back at him up the inside he's, to get the oh zone. Blacklock's boxed in he won't be able to oh oh, will he? oh, oh and he's turned no. Oh, no. oh no 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 that uh that's unfortunate Yep, I don't think that'll be looked upon too kindly. I believe... Have the stewards given this race a red light? Doesn't sound like it. Yeah, looks like they're all still going, so... Deemed a racing incident. So Albert... Albert uh, taking his joker lap, as does McMillan, but... Wow. That was a... Oh, Thompson's off at turn one. Obviously not happy with his car. They're going to review that incident after the race. So just taking another look at that, it looks like Blacklock just went in a bit hot trying to defend against Albert, go side by side with him, and went into the rear of Thompson, who, well, once, uh, once Thompson went, he couldn't recover. And unfortunately took Albert's front end with him, and now Albert and Thompson are battling quite hard, but Albert's taken his joker, Thompson hasn't. As McMillan actually goes to take his joker now as well. Right, so... McMillan, the only driver with a completely clean car right now, I'd say he is in one of the best positions to win this. Thompson's also just oh, taking his joker as well. Just had a big slide coming out of the joker. Oh, yeah, you're not wrong. That was quite a opposite lock moment there. Don't push too hard, Thomas. Blacklock, interestingly, doesn't look to have much visual damage on his car if any so he's gotten away pretty lucky with that he has by the looks of it although i don't think it'll matter too much as he takes his joker and he'll probably be dq'd for that incident i'd say at the end of the race yeah i uh, you're not wrong i wouldn't um i wouldn't expect blacklock's result to stand at the end of this of course, it's the 
It's going to be close, though. Stewart's judgments in the All-Star shootout have uh, traditionally been very harsh on drivers that have caused incidents, so you want to be on your best behavior. Oh. McMillan. Oh, McMillan trying there. Yeah, this is going to be extremely close coming down into the chicane. This is the last lap, remember. And McMillan getting the power down. Oh, Blacklock struggling for rear end grip. Blacklock oh, going all blocking. the way to the left hand side of the circuit. Oh, McMillan. Yeah, McMillan forced to go to the outside. Not breaking by oh, the looks of yeah, it. Now, oh, here we go. McMillan oh, now he's breaking himself. Check. Yep, that is going to net him a slowdown. And that's going to give Blacklock the win here in Heat 4 of the All-Star Shootout. But the question is, with the incident that Blacklock caused, will that result stand? So already a bit of drama as we hear Bo Albert has DNF'd from the race. So I doubt he will receive any points from that. Sean Thompson, though... Coming across the line in third place. Who knows? Depending on the steward's thoughts on an incident, it may be a promotion to second. So it wouldn't be a bad result for Thompson either way, despite what happened to him. <laughs> Bo Albert saying that he overheated like a Ford Falcon in the winter. Funny joke. So as we await a steward's decision on that, Albert has been awarded second position. Oh, okay. That's interesting. That changes everything. Yeah. Why did that happen? Might be looking back over that very soon, just to... <laughs> just to see how that turns out. So it looks like Albert has been, Albert has indeed been given second position for that. Did he actually DNF? That's interesting. Well, either way, Blacklock has been demoted to third, and it looks like he elected to take his double points in that one. Unfortunately, he will not uh, be getting any kind of benefit from that. But Heat 5, the final heat of Round 1 of the All-Star Shootout presented by West End Mazda. Heat 5, Emily Jones for TTR, Mitchell McLeod for Talking from Gate 2, Corey Ott for Pro Force Racing, and Benjamin Smith Starting his race on Oz Mustang from gate four. McLeod's actually not on track by the looks of it, so I don't think he'll be starting. Hmm. That's uh, unfortunate for McLeod and for Talk Inc., but hey, I suppose it'll be quite the benefit for the other competitors in this, uh, in this heat. Bit of confusion in the broadcast chat about the decision to give Bo Albert second. I, I confess I'm a bit confused as well. I'm unsure what the reasoning behind that decision was. Suppose at some point we'll find out. But either way, three drivers taking to the grid for Heat 5. It's Coriot, Emily Jones, and Benjamin Smith. It's time to dump the clutch for these drivers. And it looks like Jones. Jones. Yep, and Ott. Ott. The shift from first to second once again. Corey Ott worse off this time. Emily Jones leads into turn one, but have a look there at Benjamin Smith. Massive jump. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's moving around, wanting to have a go.
Okay, so no big losers out of this one in this opening section of the lap. Corriott! Oh, that's a big slide. Euro beat intensifies. That was incredible. It managed to save that, and that was very impressive. Wow. Excellent car control from Corriott. I'm unsure if he lifted at all during that, but... Oh, and he's still having trouble keeping that car under him as he comes into the chicane, but... Nonetheless, he's lost a bit of ground to Jones and Smith. Looks like Smith's Smith is going to... Yep, Ott follows them through. I think that's a sensible thing to do for Ott. He's already at a bit of a disadvantage. Might as well take his Joker now and see if he can recover. So Jones alone, all the way out in front. Now Jones has two decisions here. She can take a Joker lap, this lap or the next one. Next one may be more beneficial. Because she'll have some time now to possibly get a few more tenths on Smith. But looking back at uh, Smith and Ott, interesting to see... Ott hasn't fallen behind too much more on Smith. No, he hasn't actually, and it's looking like he's actually probably gained time, if anything, so he's making a bit of a recovery here. He certainly is. Well, let's have a look. Jones has not taken her Joker, so she will be taking the Joker at the last opportunity. Ooh, carrying the brakes a little past the apex of turn one. Still, nonetheless, she's kept this... Oh, cuts off the road. Oh, hold on a minute. Whoa. Corey Ott, um, obviously driving this car fairly hard. Certainly is. So he's lost some ground to Smith that I fear he will not get back. Notice that with Ott. I um, think uh, he had a little bit of trouble with getting his car uh, outside the bounds of the track as Emily Jones takes her Joker. Especially watching Ott down at the chicane, he was um, a little bit too far over to the right, and that sort of compromised his entry a bit, getting those right hand wheels onto the grass. Nonetheless, Let's see where Emily Jones pops out. She's going to be well in the lead here. Yes, yeah, she yes, she's timed that quite well, actually. Yeah, very well timed, Joker, indeed. So now uh, we simply wait for the cars to cross the line. Oh, once again, making a bit of a mistake, losing more time. But I suppose Ott is very fortunate in that one of the main competitors in this race, Mitch McLeod, was unfortunately not able to make it for this heat, so Ott's guaranteed points no matter where he finishes. Yeah, which will definitely be helpful towards him. Certainly will, but uh, Emily Jones exiting the chicane. It's flat out from here for the Trans-Tasman Racing driver. Emily Jones, a clinical drive to take victory in Heat 5 of the All-Star Shootout. Smith second and Corey Ott in third. So, just uh, just fixing the overlays briefly while uh, while we get ready for the next round of the All Star Shootout, we're going to go on a quick break and uh, we'll be back very soon. You're watching the All Star Shootout 4 presented by West End Mazda on V8s Online. See you in a couple of minutes. West End Mazda, Australia's oldest Mazda dealer. The brilliant 2016 Mazda 2 Neo Hatch and now Mazda 2 Neo Sedan from just 16990 drive away. Amazing value. Or upgrade to the max and drive it away for only 19690. West End Mazda, 17 times Mazda Master Dealer. 590 Church Street North Parramatta and 106 Sunny Holt Road in Blacktown. 
See our e-specials at westendmazda.com.au. Hi guys, I'm Scott Speed, driver of this amazing Volkswagen Beetle GRC car. I got good news for the iRacing fam. We got this coming in. I'm currently working on it myself personally to make sure that it is as accurate as possible. With the addition of dirt and now this mean car, it is going to be so fun. And it's going to be available free to all the iRacing members. Personally, I can't wait to get out there and race you guys on it. West End Mazda, Australia's oldest Mazda dealer. The brilliant 2016 Mazda 2 Neo Hatch and now Mazda 2 Neo Sedan from just 16990 drive away. Amazing value. Or upgrade to the max and drive it away for only 19690. West End Mazda, 17 times Mazda Master Dealer. 590 Church Street North Parramatta and 106 Sunny Holt Road in Blacktown. See our e-specials at westendmazda.com.au. Welcome back. Welcome back, one and all, to V8s Online's live broadcast of the All-Star Shootout 4, presented by West End Mazda on the grid right now. The grid for Heat 5, Wayne Burke for Synergy Sim Racing, Aaron Lee for Redback Racing Team, Sam Blacklock for Trans-Tasman Racing, and Connor McCluskey-Young from Progression Racing Australia. Given the all-clear now to start, revs are rising. The second round of way. racing goes... And it's looking like Burke's got a good start here as well as yeah. Lee. Burke absolutely oh, screaming McCluskey Young's away. also got a good one as well. Yeah, well, it's equal actually. Yeah, it's it's close between McCluskey and Black. No, looks like Blacklock's going to take him, and he might take Lee as well. Coming into turn three, this is going to be tight. Oh, oh, he's managed to get up the inside. Just Ooh. oh, they're holding it station though, side yeah. by side. Oh, a little bit of being there. Nothing wrong with that. That's an awesome way to start this race. Wayne Burke, though, streaking away. McCluskey Young possibly going to get by Blacklock here. Yeah, it looks like they're fairly even, Lee Blacklock and McCluskey. And come into the chicane, it looks like Blacklock's trying to line up. An acceleration pass on Lee, but Lee takes his joker, as does McCluskey. So it's Blacklock and Burke still out on track right now. Let's see if McCluskey can stay with Lee. I was quite impressed with McCluskey in his last race, so... See what he can do in this one. So they both go out. McCluskey has... Dropped a little bit relative to Lee, but he's still not entirely away. 
Meanwhile, Blacklock and Burke incredibly close right now. Have a look at these guys go. Is Blacklock going to put one up the inside? He might. He's very close. Fine. No. Oh, goodness me. I... I often wonder how these drivers don't manage to rear-end each other in the braking zone there. Blacklock taking his joker. Seemed like a very late decision from him there. So this means uh, it's going to be quite the interesting final lap here. Burke is going to have to take his joker this time round. Blacklock will have gotten his done. will be able to see... Oh, whoa, Not hold on a minute. He's come out side by side with Lee. Well, it's very close. Lee's going to have the inside here for turn three. Oh, Blacklock's going to go around the outside. Oh, a little bit of a bump. A biffo. Oh, Blacklock's Black going to hold it. Right away. Whoa, how did they not... Wow, no, that's incredible. Oh, whoa. Oh, dear. Here we go. This is fantastic. Awesome racing here to start off uh, the second round of heats. And that's the kind of racing we like to see. A little bit of door banging, but at the end of the day, nobody messes up and they all keep it on the track. Oh, Blacklock almost going into the back of Lee. And now Burke is going to take his Joker. We'll see who will come out of the final corner. It looks like it's going to be Lee, but it's going to be close between him and Burke. Burke might Burke's come out in front it. here. Yep, he's got it. Well, does he? Yeah, can Lee and Blacklock catch up? Burke's going to have to recalibrate himself here as he uh, negotiates the track once again. Once again, these guys all incredibly close. Yeah, there's the best nothing separating so far. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Paul McCluskey just oh, going off a little. That was a bit of a moment. He's sticking with them, though. Well, Lee could possibly get something here. Yeah, who knows? I'm not too sure he'd be wanting to go for two aggressive moves after the incident in his first heat of the night, but looks right, like he hasn't gone. quite been able to get it. Yep. Oh, Lee's sticking to the inside, but he won't be able to get it done. Wayne Burke holds off Aaron Lee to win Heat 6. From Sam Blocklock and Conor McCluskey Young just travelling off onto the grass there. Wow, what a race. Already, that that that's a, that's a candidate for Heat of the Night right there, Cam. Yeah, definitely. A very, very close Heat indeed it was. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the rest of the night can bring. Yep, and I tell you what, uh, that racing between Blacklock and Lee... It did get a bit feisty at times, but I think at the end of the day, it's all fair play between them because they all managed to hold on. There was no heavy contact, no crashing, so to speak. Hopefully, that sets a precedent for things to come. Yeah, definitely. It's always good to see guys very, very close like that. Doesn't A little bit of contact like that isn't too bad, so it's always good to see when there's that sort of racing out there. It looks like Blacklock elected to take double points that race, so he finished uh, in third place. So that's two points on the board there for Sam Blacklock, but I can't help but think he might have been wishing that he hadn't taken double points because that's a big opportunity missed. Nonetheless, every little bit helps. The next heat, Heat 7. Negotiating their outlap now. Thomas McMillan from Gate 1 for All Star Motorsports. Josh Rogers making his second appearance in Gate 2. Brady Myers from Gate 3. And Evolution Racing Team's Bo Albert from Gate 4. This once again, this, this is going to be a very closely matched one. Yeah, it definitely is. It's going to be very, very close. And it's going to be interesting to see who comes away with this. I'd... Yeah, it's going to be close. I can't actually say who's going to win it actually it's because of it yeah. being that competitive yeah you, you yeah i can't really pick a winner from this one rogers is a, a definite candidate for the win 
but Albert and McMillan, both very fast drivers in their own right, and we saw how McMillan did uh, in his last heat, so I think he'll certainly be a factor in this, but they're all lining up on the grid. Myers, the last to take his spot, just being asked to move forward slightly. And that is two race controls satisfaction right there. The revs are going to rise. Heat seven of All-Star Shootout four, ready to go. Oh, now it's missed the start completely there. Yeah, he has. And have a look there at McMillan. Big jump from him. Yeah, he has. He's actually got quite a good start. Yeah, that's a... Very good start from McMillan, but Rogers isn't too far behind. Now Rogers is switched on. He's going to try and go for the lead here at turn three. It's Ooh. looking like he's got it. Oh, no, McMillan's going to come back. Yep. Oh, and he might get done by Myers here. Ooh. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rogers almost that tagging McMillan. He just feathered the brakes there to keep out of it. Good job from Rogers. Looks like he's going to have the inside line here. Doesn't want to push out too wide. Oh, it's going to get Myers here as well. Yeah, it certainly is, but McMillan has the traction. Side by side by side. Whoa, whoa, Myers. Yeah, have a look at Rogers taking the lead yeah, there, side Myers by side with the chicane. McMillan as well. Yeah, and McMillan responds by taking his joker. And so does Albert, actually. All right, so there we go. Josh Rogers assuming the lead of Heat 7. Brady Myers. A lot closer than I expected him to be, to say the least. Yeah, definitely. He's doing really well, actually, at this point. Yeah, i got to say, the uh, the Progression Racing Australia guys have really impressed me so far. I know it's still only early days, but they've, uh, they've definitely shown that they can take it to the faster guys. So now, having taken their Joker, it looks like McMillan and Albert not particularly close together, but one mistake from either of them could change all of that. Let's see if Rogers or Myers decide to take it. Nope, neither of them elect to do it, so they're waiting until the final opportunity once again. Tell you what, Cam, I, I think once they take their Joker, it's going to be very close between all four of these drivers. Yeah, it definitely is, and it's going to be one heck of a finish, I reckon. Yep, Rogers all over the track right now, trying to um, just steal as much time as he can, taking to the dirt in places. Myers just falling back slightly. So here we go. It's crunch time for the top two here. Into the chicane they go. Rogers and Myers dipping wheels into the grass. So down into the club pit lane they go. Where are McMillan and Albert going to factor into all of this? Both of them negotiate the first part of the Joker well. I tell you what, Myers might be in trouble here. He yeah, possibly Ooh. might. It's gonna be close. Rogers and Myers look like they both cut the uh, the exit there. But here comes Albert though. He's really closed up on McMillan. You can't put a move on people in this section of the track. There's really only one possible line to take, and you go side by side. Oh, Myers just oh, struggling with the one. rear end. Oh, Albert oh, as well. Albert. Big drift as well. And he's going to have a bit of a run on McMillan, but looks like oh, McMillan's going to have the inside. Can Albert hold it? Nope, he won't. Not quite. There's actually a little bit of contact there by the looks of it. Oh, Albert's going to try and come back at him down the hill. 
Yep. Oh, this is going to be a good finish between them. Rogers crosses the line. Victory. Myers second, but who's going to finish in third? Oh, it's going to be close. It's going to be Elbert. Elbert. Yes. Oh, goodness me. That was a fantastic finish for the final spot on the podium. I'm going to rewind that and see just how close the finish was. That was bloody close to say the least. I think by a little... I'm going to say him. Probably a front end, actually, yeah. by the looks of it. The space between the front bumper and the front wheel, I think, was the the gap between those guys. But Bo Albert finishing in third place. And a little bit of an update on the issue with Albert being given second place in his last heat earlier. That has been rectified. So um, that is uh, going to be Albert with zero points and Thompson finishing in second So another fantastic heat to add to this excellent second round that we've had so far. The next drivers to take to the grid in Heat 8, Corey Ott in Gate 1, Gate 2, Benjamin Smith, Jake Maloney starting from Gate 3, and Talkings Hayden Dodman starting from Gate 4. Now to pick a winner from this one, once again... It's going to be difficult. Corey Ott, he's fast, but seems a little bit inconsistent. Jake Maloney and Hayden Dodman, we know, are more than capable of winning races. Benjamin Smith, a bit of a wild card here. Yeah, he is. It's going to be interesting to see who's actually going to take this out. Well, we'll find out in about a minute's time as the drivers are negotiating the chicane. Coming up to line up, Ott is going to be the first, doing a bit of a burnout to heat up his rear tyres. Looks like Maloney and um, Maloney and Smith both electing to. Warm up their rear tyres. Goldman deciding not to. But here we go. Once again, Ott moving backwards on the grid slightly. And the green flag is going to wave very soon. Now. And it looks like Goldman's got the best start here. As well as Maloney. Excellent start from Dodman. That, um, that rubber being laid down. Uh on the racing line has certainly helped him there. Ooh, have a look at Smith and Maloney right on the back of Dobman. Ott trailing behind slightly, but if any of the top three come together, he'll be right in there. Oh, Smith just taken to the grass. Dobman struggling with a little bit of oversteer. This is going to give Maloney a slight run. Yeah, be careful of Smith, though. Yep, Dobman's staying to the left-hand side of the circuit. Maloney goes to the outside of the chicane. Oh, that's close. Oh, and oh, right a bit wide. Oh, have a look at Smith. Oh, 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 oh is that contact? Both of them. Oh, oh he's round. On. Oh, Maloney's oh, no. run straight into it. Big tank slapper from Benjamin Smith, and that has ruined both of their races. Very unfortunate. That was that was a good bit of racing up until then, but unfortunately it looked like uh, Smith and Maloney just made a little bit of contact and um, Smith unfortunately overcorrected, could not recover, but Maloney taking his joker. Looks like um, both Smith and Maloney with... Very sorry looking front ends. So that means after that cut price racing replay that Hayden Dobman and Corey Ott are sitting pretty to finish first and second at the moment. I tell you what, I I uh, Hayden Dobman definitely the favourite right now to be sure. 
But as we've said, one mistake. And Ott is going to be right there. Ott has pace. He's definitely got the speed. But Maloney right on the tail of Smith. Looks like Smith's just dropping a bit as he takes his Joker. Well, ran a little bit wide through turn one there. Smith exiting the Joker now. Out he goes. So Ott's lost a bit more time to Hayden Dodman. But as they come up to complete the end of lap three, both of these guys will be taking their Jokers. And then that will cleanse the field for Heat 8. Uh, my mistake, everyone's taken their Joker already. So Hayden and Corey took them on lap one. My mistake. My apologies, everybody. We are but human. Hayden Dobman crosses the line to Apparently start Corey the final lap. And... Oh, what on earth is going on there? What's Ott doing? What did he do? That's very odd. He doesn't seem to have done anything wrong. The engine's not running on the car. Maybe he blew it in the... Um... On, on a shift and missed a gear. Well, either way, that's Corey Ott's race done. Out of fuel? That's, that's a very bizarre incident there. We'll give you an update on that, I suppose, as soon as we can, and if the information comes to light, but Hayden Dobman is going to cross the line to take a commanding victory in Heat 8. Wasn't troubled very much during that race at all. No, he wasn't. And Jake Maloney just coming across the line now to take second. Benjamin Smith will be not too far behind as he comes down the hill now to take third. Well, that's a real shame for Corey Ott. Um, he, was, he was looking very good to take... A welcome second place finish but yeah unfortunately just lost it right at the end so you left the car running after the last race we're hearing from the director so that's caused it to run out of fuel which wow that's that's a real shame but it's one it's one of those things that you don't really think about at first but it's still something that you need to consider in events like this that run in a long qualifying session and are manually controlled. So I guess a lesson for the other drivers in this field, make sure that you turn your car engine off. So with that heat complete, heat nine is now ready to go. Brenton Hobson, Having another try from gate one with Scott Larnack in gate two. Emily Jones starting from gate three. And Mitchell McLeod meant to start from gate four, but I don't believe he is in the server yet. No, he's not. And Maloney elected to take double points in that race, we've just heard. So I suppose he'll be very happy with that second place finish. He probably thought it was in, uh, in jeopardy when he had the incident with Smith. Yeah, I'd say... He did, and he was actually quite lucky to get away with that. So we pretty happy to get of get second instead of last. Yep, one hundred percent. Well, the drivers for Heat Nine have made their way onto the circuit. Of course, this is going to be another three car heat due to Mitchell McLeod's absence. He is on his way, though, so we will see Mitch making an appearance tonight. Looks like uh, Hobson is far ahead of Larnack and Jones. So, um, 
So Hobson will be spending quite a bit of time idling on the grid, waiting for his two competitors, who will probably have the benefit of warmer tyres. But Hobson coming up to the start-finish line now. And Larnack and Jones follow suit. And Larnack uh, pauses to light up the rears, do a bit of a practice start, warm up the tyres. Looks like the... They're starting a bit of a ways back from the start-finish line this time. About half a car length, which is a bit bizarre, but race control has elected that it's too standard. And now they are away, and it looks like Larnak has gotten the best start, but Jones gets him in phase two. Hobson's lost out on the upshift. Larnak's going to have the inside for turn one. Can Jones hold it, though? She gets on the throttle nice and fast. Like my... Yes, and she's got a head. Yep, and, and have a look at Hobson. Right it. Yeah, wow. Hobson really pushing hard after that botched start. So he's right in this. This is a very competitive, uh, very competitive heat. These drivers are very evenly matched. Once again, it's it's hard to pick a winner from this one. Yeah, it is. It's so close to the point where you can't actually really choose who's going to win it because it's that close. Yep, well, Hobson... Oh, oh just game. tags the rear of Larnak, but fortunately, Larnak uh, recovers. Just, but yeah. he takes his joke lap. So there we go. Now Hobson is left to pursue Emily Jones. So it looks like Larnak has gotten the Joker done nice and cleanly. Hobson v. Jones, though. It'll be interesting to see how that turns out, because in the V8 supercar, Hobson's traditionally been in front of Jones, at least since she's been competing for Trans-Tasman Racing. Looks like, though, Hobson hasn't quite been able to catch up to Jones as much as he'd probably like. Well, Hobson takes his Joker. One of the few drivers so far to elect to take it uh, in the middle phase of, uh, of the heat. Now I guess it all depends on what Jones can do from here. Hobson is ahead of Larnak. So he has managed to gain. It's very close between them though. And as they come out onto the back straight it'll certainly be interesting between these guys and the braking zone I wonder if Larnax won to return favours oh he's having a go <laughs> he's right probably going to make a move if he can yep well Jones is going to take her joker it's going to be close between them. Oh, Lanark, get a look at... Is Hobson going to get it? Could. It's going to be close. Emily Jones coming out now. It's going to be... Sure, oh, that's yeah. close. Oh, there's contact oh, no! between Lanark and Hobson. So there we go. That's Hobson's race over. He'll uh, recover and finish third in the end, but... That's really helped Jones's campaign. She's going to take home another win from this. Yes, she will, and I'm pretty sure TTR are going to be pretty happy with that.
Well, Larnak struggling for rear end grip through the fast right hander. Fortunately, the Mustang is a very easy car to drift, as Corey Ott so kindly demonstrated in his first heat. But Emily Jones stays out of trouble to take second win from two heats she's competed in. With Scott Larnack finishing in second not too far behind and Brenton Hobson coming across the line now to take third. And Hobson elected to take double points in that and so did Larnack. So a couple of things have happened here. Hobson's been awarded second uh, as a result of Larnack turning him around. So he'll be very happy with his points haul from this race. Larnack probably a bit less so. Yeah, but that's the rule sitting the other day and the move probably wasn't on, but... Yeah, at the end of the day, you kind of don't need to be making silly moves. Yes, indeed. But Emily Jones, your winner for Heat 9, Heat 10, the grid now on screen. So that's going to be Joseph Fabian for Redback Racing Team from Gate 1, Sean Thompson from Gate 2 for Pro Force, Stephen Lattimore making a second appearance in Gate 3, and Dane Warren starting from Gate 4 now. I would hedge my bets and say that Warren is the favourite here. He's starting on the racing line and um, he's shown that he is definitely one of the drivers up towards the pointy end of the field in this event. What about you, Cam? Yeah, I'd say I'd put my money on Dane Warren because I would not be surprised if he takes this one out. Of course, but... We've got to remember, once again, the start is a very crucial phase, that initial jump off the line. If you mistime that shift from first to second and miss the gear, then you're really on the back foot. Yeah, you definitely are, and you've got to really make sure that when you pull that next gear, you've got enough clutch. And... Well, either way, they're all lined up onto the grid. Warren just a little further ahead. Revs rising. Heat 10 of the All-Star Shootout is going. It looks like it's pretty even between all the drivers. Warren. Fabian's got not too bad for start, but look, Warren's going to go around the outside of everybody. Oh, Lattimore and, and Thompson made a little bit of contact in a straight line there. Looks like they can all slot in. Lattimore versus Thompson, though. Oh, they make side-by-side -side contact. And Thompson's going to go up the inside, and he's going to hold he around missed. the outside here. Yep, he gave Lattimore room there. Good to see. And it looks like Lattimore may have this, but oh, they're going to continue to go side by side through the S's. Oh, oh and that is another is. bit of contact there. Looks like they both recovered gonna from that, though. And Lattimore is going to go past. I think race control would look at that as um, an unintentional redress, but a redress nonetheless. Racing incident. At least from my point of view. Yeah, I mean, the good thing is that he's at least readdressed, which is the main thing. It's always good to see guys providing a bit of sportsmanship when that sort of thing happens, when you don't really intend to have that happen. Yep, and Warren takes his joker on lap one from the lead. I don't think we've seen anyone do that before, apart from uh, Hayden Dodman in uh, Heat 8. So he's going to come out just ahead of Lattimore and Thompson. So that should give you an idea of just how far behind Lattimore and Thompson will be when they take their joker laps. Joseph Fabian, meanwhile, far in the lead. Looks like Thompson's fallen back a bit from Lattimore. Yeah, it does by the looks of it. I think Lattimore just might have had a bit of an edge on him in uh, in that section of the course on that lap, and Thompson 
not taking the optimal line through the chicane, but he follows Lattimore into the pits for their joker. And Joseph Fabian will take his joker on the last lap. So that's Thompson and Lattimore done, and looks like Lattimore's fairly safe for third at the moment. But the question is, who will come out on top in terms of the top two? Joseph Fabian for Redback Racing Team will have to come in this lap. As Mitch McLeod connects to the server, he will be making an appearance. But um, what we'll focus on now is Joseph Fabian taking his joker. Is Dame Warren going to go past him? Yes, he is by the looks yeah. of it. Dame Warren's well and truly got this. So, yeah, very big lead from Dame Warren. And I think it's just a bit of a cruise from now on for, for Dane. So that's Fabian a long way out in second from Lattimore, who once again is not facing much pressure from Sean Thompson for third. So looks like this is how the results are going to be. I'd say so, probably. So Dane Warren, he was our favourite coming into this heat and it looks like that's going to ring true so Dane Warren comes across the line and takes victory in heat 10 of the all-star shootout okay, so Fabian is, not too far behind in second Stephen Lanmore third and Sean Thompson in fourth Looks to me like Warren elected to take double points in that as well. So he gets a grand total of eight points from that win. That's just about the best result you could possibly get. Warren must be very happy with himself. Yeah, I'd say more than likely is with the fact that he can that he scored maximum points in that race. Doing a bit of a celebratory drift. Dame Warren, a very happy chappy right now. Winning Heat 10. So that is the second round of Heats done. We will move very shortly into the third round. Heats 11 to 15, and that is on screen right now. Gate 1, Bo Albert. Gate 2, Joseph Fabian once again. Gate 3, Mitch McLeod. And Gate 4, Benjamin Smith. So McLeod will take to the grid for this one. And for Fabian... It's a very quick turnaround. He gets straight back out onto the track. So, let's have a look. Uh, Albert got zero points in the first round. How many did he get in the second round? One. So... Albert, um, a bit on the back foot here. He'll want a very good result from this. I would say, in terms of who's going to win, it's pretty tight between Albert and McLeod. Yeah, it is. It's hard to decide between those two who's going to win. I'd say McLeod would, although we don't know what's going to happen. So yeah. it's going to be interesting. Yeah, reminder, this is going to be McLeod's first um, first race in tonight's event, so he's not he's not going to have had much time to practice either, but I think McLeod and, uh, by extension, a lot of the other guys at Talk Inc. Uh, seem to have a knack for racing well without much practice. Benjamin Smith, though, don't count him out. He's uh, I think he's going to be very good for second. So here we go. 
Drivers are standing by. Just shifting around on the grid a little bit, so it's two race control satisfaction. And now the revs are rising. What can Mitch McLeod do here? In his first run, it looks like Fabian's missed the start completely. And Albert has definitely gotten the jump here. Well, Smith's going to look at the inside. Oh, that's... He's looking. Yeah. Smith, uh, once again, at the start of these races, he's, he's right in there. So McLeod... Uh, slotting in behind Albert. Blanking a little bit. Yeah. Messed up my placings there. Wasn't quite able to find them, but uh, they're they're very close. Oh, McLeod goes very hot into the fast right hander, and it looks like that might bring Smith into play here. Maybe even Fabian. Let's have a look at what happens at the end of the straight. Smith, Not having quite. a look. Albert, meanwhile, just uh, nice and calm up front. Smith takes the Joker. Fabian takes the Joker. And yes, he is. So there we go. Fabian and Smith keeping it nice and clean through here. Oof. Smith getting very liberal with the track limits there on the exit of the pits. So it looks like Albert has the edge over McLeod at the moment. Of course, Albert's already had uh, two races worth of, uh, of running time to get used to the car. McLeod's probably literally just walked in the door. But McLeod doing very well not to fall too far off. Yeah, he's keeping up with Bo there, considering he's done zero practice. Well, they cross the line to start lap three, and both Albert and McLeod will have to take their joker now. Wondering if Smith will be able to come back into play at this stage. Fabian is right behind Smith, though. Wondering if that's going to be an incredibly close battle for third. Or if, uh, if McLeod and Albert um, aren't as clean with their Joker. This might be a four-car race to the end. We'll have to see, though. McLeod and Albert down at the chicane. We'll see Still them crest close. the hill and go straight ahead. Yeah, McLeod's gained on Albert a bit here. Oh, McLeod oh, really late on brakes. brakes. Yep, ABS of the Mustang keeping it in check. Looks like Smith and Fabian will come out just behind them. So, wow, these, these guys are not too far apart. Wonder if we'll see any spirited moves. Oh, as Smith goes right across the dirt. The apex of turn three. Oh, McLeod, a little bit of an oversteer moment once again. It's looking, looking like fairly Albert's even. This. Yep, Albert's got this for sure. But it looks fairly even between everyone right now. I doubt we'll see any position changes in the final few corners. Oh, oh Smith. Oh. oh, dear. Wow, he managed to hold it, though. Oh, Fabian's Fabian. gone around. Oh, no, Fabian's looped it. McLeod run on the tail of Albert, but... It's not going to stop Bo Albert from taking the win there in Heat 11 of the All-Star Shootout. And Benjamin Smith will finish in third with Joseph Fabian not too far behind in fourth. Yep, and Albert um, concluding his in-lap in spectacular fashion, to say the least.
For the next heat, heat 12. Sean Thompson will start from gate one with Myers from gate two. Dane Warren once again in gate three and Wayne Burke from gate four. And once again, I get the feeling Dane Warren is going to take the spoils of victory here. Yeah, I'd say so. Although Wayne Burke's not been doing, doing too bad tonight, so he may be in contention for this as well. Yeah, certainly. I think that I think that Wayne Burke is almost guaranteed second for sure. But um, that is um, that is the question: if he will be able to challenge Dane Warren for victory. If Warren makes a mistake, he'll certainly be right there with him. News just in: Bo Albert elected to take double points in that race. So once again, he's gotten the, the optimum result: eight points for victory. And I think um, after the All Star shootout that he's had so far tonight. He'll be welcoming those eight points with open arms. Yeah, he definitely will. So there we go. Heat 12 getting ready to start off. Dane Warren at the chicane, as is Thompson. Wayne Burke is bringing up the rear on the back straight. Of course, once again, we cannot discount Brady Myers. He's been he, he's been there or thereabouts all through the night so far. If Burke yeah. or Warren slips up, he'll capitalize for sure. Yeah, definitely. It'll be very close between the three of them, I reckon. All right, so Wayne Burke is the last driver to take his slot starting on the racing line where most of the rubber is. Looks like a fairly even grid between these guys. Hitting the rev limiter. And away we're going to go. Oh, Dame Warren almost jumped the start there. I saw his car quiver a little. Brady oh, Myers. Bruce got a good start. Yep, but Myers looks like he, uh, he either missed the shift or he's using auto clutch. Whoa, have a look at Warren. Three oh, one, three, two, one, and two, and one. Oh, oh this contact between Burke and Warren. Oh, no. So that is going to be a red light for sure. Let's review that incident here. Hmm. Well, going three wide into turn one at Road Atlanta is never a good idea to start with. But I wonder who could be deemed at fault for that, if any. Of course, Warren didn't have much room because Thompson was on the inside, but I don't know. I think, I think, I think Warren could have afforded to be a little more to the right, but I think, I think there isn't much fault either way in that one. I'm sure the yeah. stewards will have final word on that. What do you think? Yeah, it was pretty marginal on a specific person being at fault there. As you said, Dan could probably have been a little bit more to the right but yeah going three wide into turn one was probably not ideal dane got a bit of wheel to wheel from thompson as well so yeah i saw that but of course that that was started by his initial contact with burke so yeah i feel i feel like all three drivers had at least a little bit of a part to play in that dane warren was a, a bit of a ping pong ball in that uh, in that case my opinion no fault but i think uh i don't know if the stewards will think differently it looks like all four drivers have taken the grid once again for the restart so looks like it has been deemed a no fault so the revs are going to rise once again and we're going to go for a second try at this and it looks like myers got a good start initially but have a look at Bert oh, warren Lawrence. got oh. a shocker Yep, Warren, a shocker of a start. It looks oh, like Burke is going to have it into turn one. Myers backs out there. Oh, oh Lord. Look. Go look. around the outside. Excellent stuff there. And have a look at... Yes. Oh, Dane Warren's going to come back. Yeah, he's going to come back and try and take second here. But Thompson is going to have the optimum line there. Well, not so much the optimum line, but uh, one that uh, Warren would probably rather not be in for fear of starting another incident. But... 
very close between second third and fourth wayne burke with the gap and it looks like warren has uh, taken advantage of a little snap moment by sean thompson to take second back well the thompson's thompson. gonna come back here oh, oh that was very yeah. close yeah. oh that was too close for comfort and oh, it looks my. like myers, myers is, is gonna, gonna take come advantage oh, oh well, thompson's gonna mind. take his joker and so is warren by the looks of it all right so after after that um entertaining first lap the race is going to settle down slightly so burke from myers your positions on track big question is they were very close when they came to uh, when they split off and Warren and Thompson took their jokers. Thompson isn't as far behind Warren as I initially thought he'd be, so this is going to be interesting when, when Myers and Burke take their joker. I think this field's going to close right back up again. Yeah, it should do, and it'll make it that much more interesting with it being how close it'll be. Yeah, well, a little bit of an oversteer moment by Wayne Burke. Uh, off the chicane he's going to take his joker on lap two and but and uh, sorry myers is going to follow him in so this race is going to close right up a bit earlier than we expected there's warren Mate. and thompson what's well, going to be close yeah thompson's got uh warren's got myers Oh, and he's got both of them. Oh, oh but here we go. Burke's going to try around the outside on his... Oh, oh Myers no. is around the background. Myers. Yep, Myers is oh, around in the contact. background there, but Warren versus Burke side by side through the S's, and it looks like Warren's going to take the lead. Excellent move. And it's very close between Burke and Warren. And I don't think Burke is going to let Warren get away with this too easy. Have a look no, at him I'd here. No, he's got a good run. Oh, 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 I'm looking forward to this. Warren is going defensive. He's staying square in the middle of the road, forcing Burke oh. to take the inside. No, Burke backs out. Yeah, to look though. Oh, and oh, oh Warren, Warren's, Warren's gone there. around. Oh no. So that was completely on his own, Dame Warren. No fault from Wayne Burke there, and it looks like Burke is sitting pretty for victory. Yeah, yeah, it's by the Thompson for second. Yeah. So that is going to be a very welcome result for both Burke and Thompson, of course. The race is not over quite yet, but with the lead that Wayne Burke has, I doubt that there will be much of a change there. Well, there we go. Burke already uh, doing a drift. So Burke with one point in the first round, four points in the second round with victory, and he's going to take his second victory from three heats in the West End Mazda All-Star Shootout for Wayne Burke for Synergy Sim Racing, takes victory, and Sean Thompson for Pro Force Racing, is going to finish a very strong second. And Dan Warren is unfortunately going to finish third after that spin through the final chicane, and Brady Miles is going to finish fourth. Yep, and I'm going to quickly have a look at what happened to Myers, see if that was uh, contact at all, or if it was just a spin on his own. Looks From like he... what I saw, it was a little bit of contact on the exit of the Joker. Oh, uh, yeah. That was, um, I get the feeling that may have been maybe classified a racing incident. I don't know if Thompson would be deemed at fault there because, of course, there's there's no right of way on the exit of the Joker, but we'll see what the stewards have to say about that. I feel like Thompson could have afforded to stay a little more to the right, but hey, it's racing. And news just in. Looks like uh, Burke decided to also take double points in that, so he's going to come away with eight points. And it looks like Thompson has been penalised for the incident with Myers. He comes away with zero points, and Myers is going to receive the points for third.
you know, further review of that, I think that's that's fair enough. I think Thompson could have afforded to stay a little bit more to the right, but Heat 13 on screen right now. It's Maloney from gate one, Blacklock from gate two for TTR, Lee from gate three for Redback Racing Team, and Thomas McMillan, All-Star Motorsports from gate four. So, having a look at this, I'd say my favourite for this would be Aaron Lee. Considering, um, considering all the drivers here, but I think Blacklock and Maloney, you can't really count them out. Oh, you can't count out McMillan either, damn it! This is a very strong very field. Close. I think this is actually probably going to be the most stacked heat of the night, actually. Yeah, I, yeah. On 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 second thought, I think this is the most well matched field of the night, so far at least. So Aaron Lee is making his way down the hill. We're seeing Jake Maloney currently making his way there and um we've got some news in terms of the team's championship all-star motorsports and synergy sim racing are tied for first place in the team's championship as it stands at the moment now i do believe that is a little different from what my predictions were but either way We'll have time to look at that later. Revs are rising on the grid. And away we go. Looks like McMillan's gotten the best start out of all of them, but Maloney is right there. Blacklock's not too far behind, and so is Lee. Yeah, it's going to be close. Maloney's got the inside here. McMillan is going to yield, and oh, there's going to be contact got around. Oh, oh, big sh Yep, and I get the feeling that Aaron Lee is going to cop a penalty from that. Oh, dear. That is a shame. I mean, in all fairness to Lee, he did have Blacklock on the inside, and he and his car was already loaded, so he couldn't have known that it was clear. But either way, remains to be seen how the stewards will look back on that. So as we're waiting for that, I um, I did predict that TTL would be the team to finish in first place in the team's championship, but um, looks like they're equal third at the moment with uh, with TTR. So no, outright third. Sorry, TTR tied for fourth with Redback. So. With ERT, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting my team names mixed up. There's so many three-letter acronyms, Cam. It's quite hard to keep up, isn't it? <laughs> yes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So, looks to me as though Aaron Lee is not going to take the grid. It doesn't look like it. Yep, so he has been disqualified from the race for that lap one incident. So this is going to be a three-car heat. Try B and just uh, waiting for approval to be given from race control for this to start. Revs are rising. McMillan is not as boxed in as he was and he takes advantage right off the bat with an excellent start yeah that's about a car length gap actually that he's pulled already so a good yeah. start from him maloney slots in a second there yeah but have a look at blacklock oh he's he's gonna try oh, and uh try take and maloney around oh, the outside maloney's almost made contact with me that is incredible but it looks like McMillan has managed to get away. 
So Maloney v Blacklock for second place, I think, is going to be the battle to look out for at this stage anyway. As they come into the chicane for the first time, staying line astern. And McMillan takes his joker. Have a look at Blacklock and Maloney. They're even closer than before. Coming down the front stretch. Blacklock is going to stay behind. They're bumper to bumper. Oh, Jake Maloney. Oh, Maloney with a big off there. Yeah, well... Fortunately, he's managed to keep it going in the right direction, but Blacklock will have seen that. He'll know that there's a chance Maloney might do it again, and if he does, he needs to capitalize. So far, though, it looks like Maloney is doing enough to hold Blacklock back. Blacklock... It seems has a bit of an edge over Maloney in this section of the circuit. Maloney blinking a bit as he goes to take his joker. Yeah, I think that was a, a last yotta second decision from Jake Maloney. Have a look at McMillan. It's going to be close between Maloney and McMillan. I think McMillan's going to get it. If he does, it'll be just, although... Oh, yeah, play. it's pretty close. He's got it, just. It's close, though. Closer than I was expecting. So, this is going to get interesting. So now, eyes are going to be on Sam Blacklock to see if he... Elects to take his Joker this time around or next time. McMillan, though, made a bit of a mistake. That's brought Maloney back into contention here. Maloney being very aggressive over the curves. McMillan didn't take the optimal line through the chicane. Maloney has got a run on him. He's going to go up the inside into the, into the last turn. Got him. Wow. Good job from Jake Maloney. Oh, but Black Black Black's Lock. right there. Here we go. Yeah, he's going to come out right in between them. This is going to be close. Onto it. This is close. I think any of these drivers could win this at this rate. So now Maloney is in the hot seat for victory. McMillan's right there behind Blacklock, though. Poor boy. McMillan for sure uh, showed that he was the paciest uh, of the drivers, at least on the first lap. So mighty send to move up the inside. Blacklock's having a look at Maloney here. He's he's lining it up. No, he's going to slot back in. Looks like Maloney's going to hold on to this. Oh, Blacklock, Ooh, though. Blacklock's possibly got a run blocks here. Him. Maloney blocks him. So it's going to be super oh, close between these guys. But Maloney's going to take victory. Yes, he is, and McMillan's just going to miss out on second. Ah, oh, wow. Fantastic race. Fantastic finish. Yeah, definitely, and I think it's fair to say that we did, that our prediction of it being the most stacked field was actually probably right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it would have been nice to have Lee in there um, to, uh, to make sure that we had a, a substantial field, but nonetheless, that was... Um, start to finish a great uh great race and wow to make aaron lee's uh night even more horrible he elected to take double points in this race so he's got a big fat zero which is a real shame but uh nonetheless aaron lee It'll be on him to see what he can do in this next uh, in this next half of the All Star Shootout. Hopefully, he manages to get some good results from that. But Heat 14 
Scott Larnack, Hayden Dobman, Stephen Lattimore, and Emily Jones are your four drivers to take the starting grid in Heat 14. So having a look at this one. Once again, Larnack and Dodman initially jump out to me, but Jones is coming off the back of wins in both heats that she has competed in. So I would put money on her for sure. Yeah. Dodman, though, has won the two heats that he has competed in. So... Mm, it's going to be yeah. close. And of course, Larnak, he would be higher up, but unfortunately he's been involved in incidents which have set him back. So he'll be wanting to make good on this one. He definitely will. Lattimore, though, the unknown quantity. We'll see what he can do in amongst this field. I'll definitely be watching him. So the drivers have lined up, or are continuing to line up. And here we go, the revs rising. Heat 14. We're away. Oh, good jump from Jones there. Yep, and McLeod is right with her. No, sorry, Dotman is right with her. I'm already getting my names mixed up. Dodman has got the inside for turn one. Jones is going to try and hold it. And she's done that fairly well, but Dodman's going to have the inside in turn three. No, Emily Jones has gone around the outside and is ahead. Yep, so Jones leads. Oh, have a look at Larnak. Oh, oh no, Larnak again. How would you be if you were Scott Larnak? My goodness. Probably quite disappointed, if I'm fairly honest. Yeah. That is a shame for him. I, I, I honestly feel for him, like, that he's not uh, he's not having a very good night, that ERT driver. No, he's not, unfortunately. And ERT isn't in general, I think. Well, it looks to me like uh, Larnak has been disqualified from the race, or not. Is he... He's exiting the... No, he's not exiting the pits, so... Yep, it looks like Larnak was once again deemed to be at fault for that incident. Well, not once again. I'm getting my words mixed up here. My apologies to, uh, to Scott. He will have to sit this out. The standings currently on screen. Dame Warren is leading the driver's standings from Wayne Burke and Jake Maloney. i got to say, the predictions that I came up with for the shootout uh, looking a bit topsy-turvy right now. The teams are very close as well. 19, 18, and 18. That's All-Star Synergy and TTL. So incredibly close there. What is Emily Jones doing on the grid? She went past the start-finish line. But either way, this is going to be another three-car heat that we're dealing with at the moment. Dodman, Jones, and Lattimore. Looks like Dodman has gotten the best start here, and Lattimore... Jones has got not too bad either. Yes, once again, Lattimore falling behind on the upshift. Dolman's Jones... got it by the looks of it. Yeah, Jones almost tried to hold it around the outside of turn one again, but uh, has elected to stay back. Ooh, goodness me, they're very close at the moment. Couldn't put a piece of paper between their bumpers at the moment. 
Oh, and it's looking like Dobbin just got a little bit of a bad run there, and it's going to help Emily Jones here. Yep, he's... Oh, yeah, Jones has got the outside line for the chicane. Dobbin covers the inside. Oh, oh that's for Conte. Ooh. That was close. It I'm could have ended in tears. Jones spearing off. It looks like uh, Dobman's going to take his joker. So in amongst all of that, Lattimore with a little bit of front-end damage. And Jones with a bit of a dip in the rear wing that wasn't there before. So as it stands, I definitely think this is uh, this is a case of Jones versus Dodman right now. Yeah, let's say so at this point. Yeah, Lenamore has fallen behind a bit. But all he has to do is finish and he will get points on the board. So he's doing everything he needs to right now. Jones does not elect to take the Joker, so she's going to take it at the last opportunity. And so does Lattimore. And Jones taking all the curb and then some in turn three. As it seems a lot of drivers I want to do in this event so far. The Mustang, for uh, for a car of its weight and lack of grip, it's quite a chuckable thing, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. A far cry from the Radical that was raced here for the first time. So Jones and Lattimore will take their jokers, and the question remains now, where is Dodman going to slot in in all of this? Looks to me like he may not be able to get Jones, but oh, as they come closer to turn one, it's going to be close. I think Jones I may think have it. Oh, I think Just. Jones might have actually taken a bit too much of the grass on the exit the of the joker lap yeah well it's it's close between herself and doldman right now doldman was leading when he elected to take his joker so he'll probably have the tunnel vision on wanting to pass jones and he's already having a look at Jones's left to see what he can do, but I don't think he's far up enough to try and make a move stick. Oh, that was close. Goodness me. That's going to be an off track for Jones for sure. She took, um, almost had all four wheels on the grass, but a very close victory. A victory nonetheless for Emily Jones once again. Dodman finishing a well-deserved second place. And Lattimore comes home for third. Dodman decided to double points that race, so he'll probably be a bit disappointed that he wasn't able to take victory, especially when it was so close between himself and Jones, but double points is double points. And to get second with double points is not too bad either. So the next heat, heat 15, Connor McCluskey Young, Brenton Hobson, Corey Ott, and Josh Rogers. All in for heat 15. And to pick a winner from this, I don't know. 
Rogers it looks like one one safe bet to make. But you can't discount Brenton Hobson. Yeah, definitely. Hobbo's definitely not been doing too bad tonight. So, yeah, I reckon it's going to be between those two. So, as I try and uh, find the drivers as they're coming round to take their spots on the grid. Looks like Emily Jones has won every race she's entered so far, which is a very good record to come away with. Yeah, definitely. It's very impressive to actually have done that. And interestingly, it looks like only three cars have taken the grid here. Where is Connor McCluskey? Hmm, still in the pits, so... Unsure of what, um, what this will mean. If race control will give him a couple of minutes to come around or elect to start the heat anyway. Looks like they have decided to go ahead with Heat 15, so the revs are rising. And away they go. It looks like Ott's come off for the worse on that start, but it's fairly even. Oh, Hobbin's got a good start. It looks like Rogers missed the gear. All right, so Brenton Hobson's going to lead into turn one. However, Rogers already looking very racy. Look at the amount he's gained already on Hobson. That's incredible. Yeah, it's just unbelievable how much time he's gained after that bad of a start. It's looking like he's got a good run through the sweeper here, and he's going to be able to make a move at the end of the straight. Yep, so through he goes. It's going to be close between Hobson and Rogers here, side by side in the braking zone down at the chicane. Have a look at how late Rogers is on the brakes, but Hobson has the inside and then the outside. He's got the traction there. Looks like Rogers has squeezed a little bit, and Hobbo goes for his joker lap there. Yep, as does Corey Art. So Rogers alone out the front. Apparently it sounds like Connor's pedals unfortunately had a bit of a failure, so that's why he's not in this race by the sounds of it. So Hobson and Ott now negotiating the circuit on their second lap. Rogers coming around onto the back straight. So is Rogers going to wait until the final opportunity or is he going to take his joker now? I think he could afford to take his joker now, but he's electing not to. Yeah, he's got a decent gap, so probably could have afforded to do it, but he's opted to do it on the last lap by the looks of it, so... So it's looking fairly calm right now. But of course we will have to wait until Roger's Joker. We've seen some close finishes before in this event, but... I don't know, has Roger's been able to pull out enough of a gap on Hobson? Maybe, but we'll find out very shortly. It'll be close. Certainly Will Rogers taking his joker. 
Captain Hopper is just coming over the rise now. This is going to be close. I have a feeling Rogers might just keep it from Hobson. It's looking like he will, although... You see he has. Alright, so... Now I guess it's up to Hobson to see if he can gain enough time on Rogers to maybe put a pass up at the chicane. Don't think Rogers will let him get away with that, though. Well, it's looking fairly... fairly set at this stage as they come through the chicane. It looks like Rogers is going to take victory here in Heat 15. So Josh Rogers from Brenton Hobson and Corey Ott is going to come home third. And on that note, it's time for us to take a break and we'll come back very, very soon with the final preliminary heats for the All-Star Shootout. It's going to be round four and round five, and then we'll be getting into the semifinals and then the final. You're watching the All-Star Shootout 4 presented by West End Mazda on V8s Online. We'll be back very, very soon. West End Mazda, Australia's oldest Mazda dealer. The brilliant 2016 Mazda 2 Neo Hatch and now Mazda 2 Neo Sedan from just $16,990 drive away. Amazing value. Or upgrade to the max and drive it away for only $19,690. West End Mazda, 17 times Mazda Master Dealer. 590 Church Street, North Parramatta and 106 Sunny Holt Road in Blacktown. See our e-specials at westendmazda.com.au. Hi guys, I'm Scott Speed, driver of this amazing Volkswagen Beetle GRC car. I got good news for the iRacing fam. We got this coming in. I'm currently working on it myself personally to make sure that it is as accurate as possible. With the addition of dirt and now this mean car, it is gonna be so fun. And it's gonna be available free to all the iRacing members. Personally, I can't wait to get out there and race you guys on it.
All right, welcome back to V8s Online's live broadcast of the All-Star Shootout 4, presented by West End Mazda, gearing up for Heat 16 right now, the start of the fourth round of preliminary heats. Brady Myers starting from Gate 1 in this one with Sam Blacklock from Gate 2, Gate 3, Joseph Fabian, and Gate 4, Hayden Dodman. Drivers are just gearing up to uh, start off now. Uh, Sam Blacklock making his way out onto the track. Now this field, Cam, um, getting some news from our inside sources that Rogers decided to take double points in that race. So once again, another perfect result in this grid. But uh, Cameron Dance, who is your pick for this one? I'm going to say Blacklock for this one, as he's actually not done too bad. Although it was a bit close between Blacklock and Dodman as to who I was going to pick, but I'll go with Blacklock because he's been a little bit more consistent, although he has a few had a few rough moments in this night so far. Mm, he certainly has, but... I mean, Hayden Dodman, once again, uh, despite losing out to Emily Jones in his last heat, he still has a pretty good finishing record, so I wouldn't discount him. So we're just waiting for these drivers to line up. Looks like there's a little bit of jostling around. I think there may be a bit of confusion over who's in what gate. Brady Myers catches up to take his place in gate one. I think Dodman stands a chance of getting the best start here, being on the outside line where the rubber is. You're starting to see some proper rubber build up. Uh, on the track as well, particularly through the last turn. Yeah, we are actually, as the revs are rising, and we are racing. Yep. Oh, great like... start from Myers here, and Blacklock. Whoa. Yeah, it's pretty even. Fabian's getting left hung out to dry here. Oh, three wide into turn one again. Oh, no, here we no, go. No, 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 no. no Blacklock back. So, oh, oh but a contact between Myers and Blacklock, and that's it. Oh, oh head in collision. Three cars with incredible front end damage, and oh boy, that is going to be a red flag for sure. Question is, who's at fault for that? We've got a replay, a cut price racing replay up on screen right now, so you can have another look at that incident. Once again, the old three wide into turn one issue, but uh, it looks like Blacklock. Um, decided to back out of it i also think blacklock made a little bit of rear quarter contact with myers which may have set him into the path of dodman somewhat yeah it's hard to really put someone at fault there well the stewards will have the final word the steward will be the drivers are coming round all with uh, with new fresh cars and blacklock i think may be out because well he's uh exited the track in spectacular fashion <laughs> so looks like he's been deemed at fault for that for making that touch on myers sending him into the path of dodman And I mean, like, I personally would have called that a no fault, but at the same time, it's it's been consistent so far. 
Yeah, it has. And that's what you primarily want in any sort of stewarding situation. You want to be consistent with what your decisions are. Yep, well, the revs are rising once again. Joseph Fabian square in the middle of Hayden Dobman and Brady Myers. And it's Green Myers getting a good start. Looks like... Uh, oh, Fabian's come back. Yeah. Yeah, he's come back and Dodman. Oh, a little bit of quarter contact between Fabian and Dodman. Hayden is going to lead out of turn one. Myers slots into second. Oh, have a look at Fabian really pushing the limits. Oh, and Dodman bouncing over those curbs. Just be careful with that, because that's allowed mice to catch up a little bit. Yeah, certainly has. It's a, it's a bit more even at the end of lap one than I thought it would be. Have a look at Myers weaving around in the braking zone. Trying to distract Hayden. Now, who's going to elect to take their joker on lap one? Looks like look. Dodman. So there goes Fabian and Myers. And Fabian is still in there, isn't he? He is. He's just hanging tight, but he's keeping up. Yeah, that's actually surprising. Uh, almost uh, a car length within range of Myers. As it stands right now, stretches out to about two car lengths through this section, but he may come back. Looks like fairly clean through the chicane once again. Fabian, ooh, Fabian takes his joker, but he stayed, he stayed pretty, he stayed with Myers pretty well in this race. That's impressive. Yeah, it is actually. He's not too far behind. He's just sitting station at the moment, waiting for a mistake from Myers. Well, the question is, well, Dodman has well and truly gone past Fabian. I have a feeling that Myers will slot in between these two now. Yeah, he might. It'll be interesting to see where he comes out, actually. Well, we haven't really talked very much about what it's like inside the cockpit when you're competing in one of these races. They're incredibly short and frenetic races but they require all of your concentration and then some and it's very easy to slip up especially going down to the heavy braking zone for the entry into this joker lap you go over a rise just after the apex of the turn into the pit lane and it looks like Dobman is going to go past Myers but it's still going to be a bit close between Myers and Fabian Myers might just get him, I reckon, yep. Yep, looks like it. Fabian, though, I don't think he's quite done with Myers yet. He still has a chance at grabbing second. Well, Dodman in the box seat to win right now. He's got a very big gap over second place. And as they enter the final acceleration zone, it seems to me that Brady Myers is going to hold off Joseph Fabian for second, but Hayden Dodman taking yet another victory in the All-Star Shootout 4. Indeed. And I think Dodman's form, as well as Jones's form, they've been absolutely brilliant so far 
in this shootout. I feel like so, some of the some of the drivers that I would usually have expected to be on top have faltered a bit. And Dodman yeah, and Jones have, have been there to pick up the pieces. Yeah, they have, which is quite interesting to see, actually. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens come the semifinals and finals. I reckon Dodman and Jones will probably make the final at, with the way they're going. Well, the next heat. We're moving full steam ahead here. Heat 17. It's going to be Benjamin Smith from gate one, Emily Jones from gate two, Connor McCluskey Young from gate three, and Sean Thompson from gate four. And tell you what, I feel like there is one clear favorite here after her form so far in this event, Emily Jones. I'd be very surprised if she, uh, she didn't take victory or at the very least finish second. It is the battle for second, though, that I'm very interested to see uh, eventuate. Because Smith, McCluskey, Young, and Thompson, as we've seen in previous heats, they're all very well matched, aren't they? Yeah, they are, actually, which is very good to see as well, because it provides close racing. It sure does. Well, they're all out on track at the moment, preparing for the start of their heat. And I think Thompson has the most potential for a good start here, being on the outside. They're standing by for the green flag. And away they go. Looks like they all stayed pretty consistent. Oh, Jones straight away, gone. Yeah. That is an excellent start from Jones. And look, they're going to go three wide into turn one behind her. Smith's on, oh, on McCluskey Young and on. They're all taking each other out. Oh, dear. There we go. Once again, three wide into turn one. No, it, it is not going to work. <laughs> it could have worked there at that point. But yeah, just yeah. some minor contact between Connor McCluskey Young and Sean Thompson, unfortunately, caused that. Yeah. It looks to me like um, Sean started to move over uh, to turn in for turn one, and McCluskey Young was continuing to go straight. So both lines are valid, but I don't know. I Once again, it's difficult for me to find any one person at fault there. I think there was something that both McCluskey and Thompson could have done, could have done different. But either way, we're back live from that cut price racing replay of the start, and we'll be awaiting a decision from the stewards very soon. Currently got the standings on the screen at the moment, just to re-familiarize yourself with the state of play at the moment. Rogers and Dodman tied for first place. That is going to be very interesting to see develop as we move into the final rounds. So, still waiting for a like steward's decision Connor here. Husky Young has been given the red light by the sounds of it. Oh, yep, there he goes, off the grid. So, that was deemed to be his fault there. Once again, consistent. It looks like um, the fault has gone to the driver who's made rear end contact. I think at this point, for some of the guys, it's actually more about risk management rather than anything else. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, especially at this stage, in the mid-stage, where you're trying to get those uh, extra points on the table. We're about to go green here. Still waiting. So Heat 17 of the All-Star Shootout is go, and it looks like it's fairly even between them. Jones though, once again, getting the optimum start from the middle placing. Oh, 
looks to me as though Benjamin Smith has slotted into second ahead of Thompson. Indeed he has. So, looking pretty even so far, I don't foresee too much hard action in this race. Though having said that, Smith is not falling back from Jones. In fact, he seems to be staying with her, if not gaining on her ever so slightly. Yeah, he is actually, so if he can hold on, it might actually oh, be Oh, very aggressive into the braking zone. Very Ooh. low on the brakes. How do you pull that up? I will never know. <laughs> And he'll yeah, immediately to the Joker lap. So that leaves Jones and Thompson out there on the circuit as Smith negotiates the Joker. So interesting point raised by Director Jay. What's the bet that Emily Jones has gone for double points in this one? I'd say it's fairly certain. Yeah, I'd say so, and it would not surprise me if she has. Certainly a sensible decision, considering that she has won every heat she's entered so far. She jumps into the chicane once again, Thompson trailing behind a bit. But once again, now that one of the, as Emily Jones takes the Joker, Thompson stays out. As we said earlier on, with I believe it was Lattimore, when one of the cars has been taken out of your heat, then the pressure is sort of off a little bit. You're still going to have points on the table regardless if you manage to keep it clean and not get on the wrong side of the stewards. Yeah, definitely, and that's that's pretty much the main game of this sort of event. You've got to just keep finishing races rather than trying to win it in turn one like some of these guys have, unfortunately. Well, it looks to me like Jones has gained a little bit here on Smith. And up ahead... Thompson will take his Joker. And that will cleanse this field as they take the white flag onto their final lap. And I think Jones has definitely got this at this rate. Smith is just too far behind to make anything work right now. Yeah, I'd say well and truly she's got this in the bag. We're going down through these incredible S's at Road Atlanta, one of the best pieces of racetrack in the world, in my opinion. Emily Jones will once again be feeling very happy with herself, but not too soon. So got a couple more corners to go. But with a gap like that, you can afford to back off slightly. And Emily Jones continuing her fantastic run in the West End Mazda All-Star Shootout by taking victory in Heat 17. Another fantastic drive. Smith will take second, Thompson will take third. And that will be Heat 17 done and dusted, and true to what we predicted, double points for Emily Jones. So, Heat 18 now, moving on once again. Got two more, and the fourth round will be done after this. Aaron Lee from Gate 1. Jones going right back out onto the track. 
from gate two. Progression Racing Australia from gate three. It's uh, it's going to be Albert from gate two. Sorry, I believe we uh, we had a uh, little bit of a glitch there. Apologies for that. Connor McCluskey Young from gate three. Sean Thompson from gate four. So looks like it's going to be Aaron Lee, Bo Albert, Corey Ott, and Thomas McMillan in gate 18. Apologies for that, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we, um, we've had a little bit of a, a mix-up with our broadcast slides. We do apologize for that. So, from this grid, Cam, what are your picks? I want to say Aaron Lee, but Bo Outbit hasn't been doing too bad, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens, I reckon. Yeah, I think McMillan's in with a good chance here as well. This is a very consistent field, and Aaron's got pace on his side, but he's been involved in a few too many incidents to really make an impact on, uh, on the standings. But here we go. Revs are rising and away we're going to go. Aaron Lee with a good start by the looks of it over Bell Albert. Oh, but Albert's just gone straight ahead oh, and Lee's oh. missed the gear. Once again, that is very unfortunate for Aaron Lee. Bo Albert leading into turn one. Corey Ott right in the thick of it with Thomas McMillan. Who let's go around ooh, the outside here. A courageous oh, move yes. by McMillan. Wow. Excellent stuff. But have a look at Lee here. He's going to try and capitalize here. Try and make up for some lost time. Got a run on Opt here, I believe. No, never mind. Oh, no, maybe he does. I would almost put money on Lee attempting to outbreak Ott here. Ott's going to try and cover. Oh, goodness me. Lee just getting enough space from Ott. They're going to go side by Ooh, side. Bit of contact. Lee is oh, really pushing moment. it. Wow. And not it looks like... Yep, and Lee is not going to follow him through. I think uh, that's some smart thinking from Aaron Lee. He is a bit close to Ott. If they were to take the Joker together, they would still be a bit too close together for his liking. I think Aaron, at this point, is electing to go for the clear air, try and gain a bit of time, get a position on Ott that way. So good thinking from Aaron Lee as uh, Bo Albert... Continuing to lead this heat from Thomas McMillan, who seems to be making inroads. Yeah, he does at the moment, and if he can keep doing that, he might actually be able to get to the front. Yeah, certainly, but of course, once again, it all depends on the Joker. It's a fairly simple Joker at Road Atlanta, but there is potential for mistakes. See what Alberman and McMillan do. They stay out, and Lee decides to take the Joker here. So this is going to be Lee's ploy to try and get ahead of Ott. Challenge for third, possibly second. And it looks like the ploy has worked. Aaron Lee is now ahead of Corey Ott in third place effective. So back to the front. It's closed up. McMillan, McMillan versus having, Albert. McMillan having a few internet issues there. Mm. Both of these drivers will just want to minimize mistakes. Try and get through to the end of the race without any form. Of damage to their cars. Looks like McMillan. Good under brakes, yeah. Yep. 
And it looks like he's... Wow, yeah, that, that first turn of the Joker, he really nailed that one. But it looks like Albert's gotten a bit of a run on him here. A little bit more efficient on the upshifts. And it looks like both of them are going to come out ahead of Lee and Ott. I tell you what, Lee and Ott are a bit closer than I thought they'd be. Yeah, they are, actually. Having said that, the top two are incredibly close as well. So we've got two uh, two-way battles here for the positions in this heat. It's going to come down to the final lap for Bo Albert and Thomas McMillan. And I reckon McMillan's got a good run here. It's looking like he's got a bit of a run here, so if he can get a move done, he'll be able to do it. He's looking up the inside. Yeah, he's going oh, for it. Oh, he's broken Albert very covering late him. and he's just got up the inside. Wow, what a move. Tom oh, but he's oh, left no. it. Oh, no. That was, almost the, that was almost the best move of the night. What a shame. Tell you what, he, he absolutely nailed the first part of it. <laughs> Thomas McMillan's going to come across the line in fourth place. An unfortunate result after running a comfortable second. Bo Albert's going to take victory. Well, having a look. After that result for Heat 18, we move on to Heat 19. Dane Warren from Gate 1, Wayne Burke from Gate 2... Josh Rogers from Gate 3 and Scott Larnack from Gate 4. This is going to be another one of those grids where it's hard to pick a clear winner. But McMillan, oh, bad, bad news for McMillan. He elected to go for double points in that race, so he comes away with absolutely nothing. Turned, turned a potential 8 into a 0 in the space of just a fraction of a second, Cam. That, that is, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, it is. And it's also frustrating for him, unfortunately. That was possibly going to be a very good result if that move had have actually stuck. Certainly. Well, I guess you could say that McMillan certainly has courage on his side with uh, with a move like that. Even as Albert was closing the door, he, uh, he decided to go for it anyway and uh, almost pulled it off. Fair play to McMillan. That was really good. Well, Heat 19 currently forming up. Warren got there first. Burke and Rogers are going to take their spots and Larnack lining up on the outside now. It's almost uh, it's almost random which of these guys may or may not miss a gear on the start. We'll find out right now. Looks like Oh, Rogers Burke's is the one who start. lost out this time. Yep, Burke's gotten a good start, but Warren is on the inside. Can Burke do a Jones somewhere. and hold it around the outside? He's got the... Uh, he's holding on. Rogers, oh, Rogers, Rogers. Is looking as well. Just oh, searching Burke. for any gap. He's on. Oh, have a oh. look at Warren. Just gone right through to take the lead, and now Burke Rogers is under is all over the back. pressure. Yes. Now, tell you what, Larnak not too far behind either. Oh, Rogers has got a good run here on yeah. Burke. Yeah, Burke just wasn't able to get that traction, but once again, that old chestnut of the line into the chicane. Burke has the line there, but it looks like Rogers is a bit more courageous on the brakes. He's going to go through. Burke now down to third and facing pressure from Scott Larnak. And it looks like Warren and Larnack have also gone for the jokes at the moment. Well, there we go. Between uh, Rogers and Burke, it's going to be pretty close. So now that that frenetic first lap is over, Wayne Burke now has a chance to uh, to calm himself down and maybe gain some time on Rogers as uh, 
Noticing Rogers has disappeared. Oh no, it can't be. It can't oh, be. No, isn't it? Oh. What can you say? <laughs> really, what can you say? When something like that happens to a driver in the lead, getting ready uh, to engage in some great battling for victory, Rogers will be really sad, really angry, or a combination of both. Wayne Burke, though, Wayne Burke, though, taking Jericho. his Joker as Rogers indeed drops from the server. I guess it's lucky that Rogers elected to take his double points before and take victory, because uh, if he decided to take his double points here, oh, I don't think I would have liked to have been in the same room as him on that occasion. <laughs> yeah, I think he'll be a bit disappointed, unfortunately, with that. Yep, well... Having said that, it looks like Warren is now well out in front. Larnak, meanwhile, is... He's fallen a bit behind Burke. So there's really not much to uh, not much to go on as they come uh, across the line. Dame Warren with a with an assured victory as they take the white flag. Bit of a gifted victory as well, I think. Yeah, I would say so. And it looks to me like the battle between Burke and Larnak is uh, fairly done and dusted. I can't see that changing too much anytime soon. Oh, having said that, Burke. Oh, big mistake. Oh, well, that's that going to Larnak to come up. Oh, Larnak's got a little bit oh. of shape trying to get by. Commentators curse out of 10. Wayne Burke down to third. I am so sorry, Wayne. I'll send you a box of flowers in the mail. Scott Larnack up to second place as Dame Warren comes out of the chicane and up the hill to take victory once again. And that will certainly help his points tally. So for Larnak to come home with a second place finish will certainly be welcome after the night that he's had so far. But here we go. We've moved through into the final round of the preliminaries. Heat number 21 from gate one, Hayden Dodman. For, for, sorry, for Heat 20, sorry. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. Uh, gate 1, Hobson. Gate 2, Lattimore. Gate 3, Maloney. And Gate 4, Mitchell McLeod. And this, once again, a very strong matchup. Indeed it is. It's going to be probably a very close fight between Maloney, McLeod, and Hobson, I reckon. And Lattimore might get in there as well if they do fight a little bit too hard three wide into turn one what's your bet <laughs> uh i'd probably say yes but i hope not <laughs> yeah i i don't i don't think any of us are um hoping for a three wide into turn one that ends in chaos a three wide into turn one that ends uh in all drivers getting through cleanly would be more than welcome but um yeah i i get what you're saying I'm still slightly waiting for there to be a two by two moment going down the hill through the final corner. That would be absolutely awesome. That would be fantastic for sure. But I mean, even if uh, even if these last heats in the preliminaries are absolutely 
dull as dishwater. I think, um, and, and not not implying that they will be. I certainly don't think they will be. But if they were, I wouldn't be disappointed because tonight's racing has been fantastic. But Heat 20 is about to go live. Away we go. Looks like Cobbo's got a good start as well as Maloney. Oh no, have a look at McLeod. Mr. Gear, massively. And he's fallen way back. Hobson, though, he has the inside line for turn one. Well, Maloney's going to try to go around the outside, and he's got it done. You see, hairs. Yes, indeed. So Hobson slots into second. Lattimore to third, though. Excellent stuff from him taking advantage of Mitchell McLeod's mistake off the start. These drivers are pretty close. Lattimore is staying in touch with the top two. He is, actually, so I don't think we can, can count him out just yet. Have a look here. We might see Hobson. He's got a bit of a run on Maloney. Maloney gives him room just under a car's width worth of room. Forces him to back out of it. Have a look at the run that Hobson's got here, though. Maloney responds by taking his joker. Best to avoid any hard battling this early on in the heat. And Lattimore follows him in. Hobson was actually lucky not to get on the grass. He was actually quite wide coming down the hill. Yeah, certainly. Well, after that start, Mitch McLeod will, um, will have gotten himself together and be putting down some... Hard driving to try and catch up to the back of Hobson, possibly get a shot at the win, if not a second place. McLeod's been around a very long time. We know what he can do. As it stands... Wow, Mitch being incredibly aggressive under brakes there. It looks like he's gained a bit more on Hobson. And Hobson and McLeod stay out. So this is going to come down to the final... Um, not not the final lap, the, the, the final Joker opportunity. Mitch, meanwhile, does the second fastest lap of the night, a 102.5. Point zero zero point one seven off Dane Warren's fastest time. So McLeod on a hard charge right now, and you can already see he's catching up to Hobson even more now. He is actually, so this is possibly gonna create quite the battle. I certainly hope so. They're gonna take the Joker. And Maloney and Lattimore will be right in this as well. Lattimore has fallen back a bit. I get a feeling he might come out behind McLeod here. Oh no. McLeod's... Oh, McLeod really missed the gear then. It was a box full of neutrals over the hill. He's lost out massively. Yeah, he has, and that's going to cost him quite a bit as well. Maloney's oh, Maloney's going to have the leader here. Yeah, he wow. Is. And Lattimore stands a chance here of getting third. I'd say he probably actually does at this point. Yeah, so unless McLeod can uh, can pull off a miracle and catch right up to him. I don't see Lanimal losing third. I'll tell you what, um... La Whoa, Mitch! Mitch! Goodness oh, big me. moment. Yep, really big moment. Unfortunately, uh, was not able to recover cleanly from that drift, but he's still going. Nonetheless, he will get a grand total of zero points from this race, finishing in fourth, but Jake Maloney. An excellent result from him. The TTL Esports driver crossing the line to win Heat 20. Brenton Hobson coming across to finish a well-deserved second, and Stephen Lattimore once again getting those little points in third.
So another excellent heat. Some uh, some incredible racing at the start. Unfortunate though for McLeod, uh, he um, he had the potential there to challenge for the win, but his run was just ruined by those small mistakes. Yeah, unfortunately they were, and he definitely could have had a very good chance of winning. Well, either way, that will certainly help out Jake Maloney's championship, as it were. So Heat 20 is complete, and now we will move on to the final round of the preliminary heats before the semi-finals and the final of the West End Mazda All-Star Shootout. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be a very good race. Going to be actually another good race because of how um, competitive everybody is in this race. So it'll be interesting to see who can actually come out on top on this one. Yeah, definitely. We've got uh, we've got Dodman versus Larnack versus Rogers versus Lee. You cannot pick a winner from those guys. It's just impossible. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could be biased and say Rogers is going to win it, but yeah, no, nah, I can't even guess that who's going to win this. Well, I don't have a horse in this race, and I'm still confused. So. Uh... <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this, this matchup. And they're coming round now, up over the hill, down to the final turn. I might sound like a broken record here, but what a fantastic circuit this is. Yeah, it's definitely been creating some interesting racing tonight, and it's actually made it quite close. It has for sure. Well, all the drivers in Heat 21 are lining up. Dodman, Larnack, Rogers, Lee. Who will come out on top? We'll find out now. Larnack with an amazing right. start. Yeah, right now it looks like Larnack has really got it down pat. Rogers losing out here. He's going to have to slot it behind Lee. They're going to go side by side in turn one, but it looks like Lee yields the Dodman. Rogers is going to look up the inside at turn three here, I reckon. Yeah. Will Lee let him have it, though? It looks to me like Rogers has yielded. But Larnak is your leader in Heat 21. And once again, as we've seen a couple of times before, all of these drivers... Oh, look at Rogers. Rogers got a bit got of a run. run on Lee. Yep. He's going to look at the inside. Well, the outside for this back curved back straight, but he's going to have an inside... And run into the chicane we've seen whoa hang on a minute whoa. Dodman oh goodness me Dodman made a bit of contact with Larnack there but Rogers once again super aggressive on the brakes and passes Lee it looks like yep Rogers and Dodman going for their joker Roger Dodger I'm sorry I had to all right I had a bit of a laugh as well <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Scott Larnack, though. He's looking pretty comfortable out there. Might have finally um, gotten himself a bit of... a uh, bit of confidence, a bit of consistency here. And uh, Lee... Lee's not exactly letting up, but... He's not falling behind too much either. Rogers, though, catching Dodman. Only at a very slow rate, though. What's going to happen with Larnack and Lee? They are going to stay out. So, once again, comes down to the final Joker opportunity. And Rogers getting a run on Dodman once again. He's got that breaking down pat. And throttle, for that matter. I mean, those are technically the two most important things, aren't they, Cam? Steering is kind of secondary. Yeah. 
I mean, in a car like this, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Definitely more concentrated on making sure you don't put your right foot down too much, as I just saw Rogers yeah. do that exact thing that you're not supposed to do, really, in this car. But, yeah. Yep, hangs the rear end out slightly, and uh, oh, he's very strong up the hill there. Look at how close he is to Dolman now. Meanwhile, Larnack and Lee crest the hill and go into the Joker zone. And Rogers. Oh, oh Rogers trying to squeeze it up the inside. Yeah, they're going to go side by side through the last turn. Rogers. And Rogers got through just, oh, but here we go. Dobman's going to try back up the inside at turn one. And Larnack's actually coming out of the Joker as well. Oh dear, looks like Lionel. There we go. Three, one, three, four. Oh, Rogers. oh, Rogers a bit wide. Oh, they're going to go three wide in the turn. Ah, no. no. Oh. Lionel banging on just. Lionel. Oh, 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 Lee. Oh, Lee's going to take advantage here. And he's done it. Oh, oh Dodman. Dodman's not done, though. He's definitely going to try and send it up the inside. Oh, no. Well, Rogers absolutely played the game 100% perfectly. And he's going to take victory in Heat 21, but second... Oh, but Dotman's not done yet. He's yeah. all over the back of Lee here, and he's just about pushing him. He's trying to fit into a game that doesn't exist. Oh, yeah, and it looks like Lee's just going to hold him off here. Lee finished the second, Dotman oh, third. It's close. Put a bumper. And Scott Larnack entering the pits, not even taking the checkered flag. How disappointed must he be after leading on lap one to, uh, to end up coming away fourth? That is, that, oh, if, if I were in his shoes, I would be very frustrated for sure. So that was Heat 21. Heat 22. Gate 1, Stephen Lattimore, Gate 2, Brady Myers, Emily Jones from Gate 3, and Corey Ott from Gate 4. I think it's going to be close between Myers and Jones here, uh, Cam. Yeah, definitely will. And with Jones actually leading the points, I believe, it'll, she'll definitely want to hopefully get another good result. Yes, indeed. Well, Emily Jones has a um, has a record to keep here. So far, she's won every heat that she has started. Brady Myers, though, does he have yet to take a win? I'm pretty sure he does. Two, two, one, and two. So he's been taking seconds and thirds so far in the shootout. Brady definitely has the ability to win one of these heats. And if he wants to win a heat, the time is now. Yeah, definitely. So the drivers are now out on the track. It's going to be Ott from Myers from Jones. Where is Lattimore? There we go. Lattimore's just exited his box now. And having a look at the lap times as the drivers are coming round on the on the formation lap. Um, Jones is. Uh, place on the timesheets is not exactly representative. Her fastest lap time is listed as a 129.2, but that is more due to the fact that out of all of the laps she's done in this session, she hasn't done one without an off track, so I think she would definitely be in the 103s at the very least. Yeah, I'd definitely say that would be the case. So Lattimore bringing up 
the rear of the formation as the drivers shuffle around a bit. Looks like Myers is going to have to move over for Lattimore here. This is a little bit of a um, little bit of time spent twiddling thumbs that I think Jones and Ott would rather do without. They just want to get racing. Well, they're going to have the opportunity to do that now. Lattimore, Myers, Jones, and Ott. Heat 22 grid is away, and it looks like Great Myers has got it. Jones. Yep, Myers is going to have the advantage into turn one. Have a look at the run that Jones gets on him down the latter part of the straight. And once again, yeah. the outside. Yep, Jones does a Jones and takes him around the outside of turn one. But is Myers going to defend against her here? They're going to go side by side. A little bit Ooh. of side by side contact. Jones, Ooh, Jones right out sideways. Oh, oh she's, she's gonna not held onto no. it. Oh, that is a real shame for Jones. And Myers has lifted off, so I believe the race has been red lit. Yes, it has, by the sounds of it. Well, uh, I, I don't know. What, do, what are your thoughts on that, uh, Cam? I think... Um, I don't think it's worthy of a penalty for Myers, personally, because it was only a small bit of contact and... I mean, while while Jones was put onto the grass and spun as a result of that, I don't know, I feel like it was recoverable to an extent. Yeah, it's, uh, you kind of have to think that one as a bit of a racing incident, just primarily due to the fact that it kind of wasn't really intentional or really that big of a hit. I mean, obviously a little bit more racing could have been given, but otherwise, yeah, it's you can't really say anyone was at major fault. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, racing room at the apex, I think, was perfectly fine. It was just that... It, it's, it was just that second phase, like the corner exit. They, they just made contact just after the apex. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I think Emily Jones might have been removed. Yeah, but, I think uh, she has. Yeah, oh... They're away with, with a, a terrible mess, start. Right start. That's a real shame. So Lattimore leads. Corey Ott not too far behind. Oh, oh Lattimore, Lattimore off the road. Oh, this is going to allow Ott to try up the inside of the ESS. Yeah. Oh, trying to go oh, side by Myers side. Oh, is now going to come up to this. Oh, and Myers with a bit of a bump to Ott. Very even field. Oh, it's got a bit of a run here. Lattimore goes a little defensive, but leaves room for Ott regardless. Ott yields. Oh, now Myers is going up the inside. Yeah. Oh, and Ott elects to go for his joker there. That was actually probably not too bad of an idea because yeah. had they gone too wide, they probably actually would have held each other up. Yeah, for sure. Smart thinking from Ott. Have a look at Myers, though. Getting very aggressive over those curbs. Lattimore not quite maximizing the track width. Have a feeling that Myers may try and get past here. Hasn't got much of a run, though. Lattimore's left... Oh, he's left him room on the outside, but... Whoa, hold on a minute. Brady Myers. Whoa, that was an oh, ambitious true. dive. And that's gonna... He's gonna go run. Oh, they made contact. There we go. Fortunately, neither of them... Whoa, they're both gonna... Both go oh, for the Joker side by side as well. Okay, this is going to really help Corey on. Oh no, oh, they're not racing in the Joker. Oh, 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 oh,
You know, it's was... actually cut actually now ahead of them. Yeah. Yeah, Corey Ott absolutely profited tenfold from that. We've got a cut price racing replay of that entire saga playing out for you right now. It started with Meyer's move. He he did what um what McMillan did before. Just went way deep into the chicane and then lost it on the exit, and this time Lattimore was uh, was taken with him. And then I think the real undoing was when they both decided to go into the Joker side by side. They weren't able to get through there in one piece for sure. But we're going back live, and Corey Ott takes the white flag, and... Well, I said it before, as he goes a little bit slower through turn one than is probably normal, but I've, I've been saying it from the start, Corey Ott, he's had the potential, he's, he's been a bit rough around the edges, but he's had the potential, and now, due to, due to the um, mistakes of others, it's, it, it's, it's the typical story, isn't it? He's, he's taken advantage of others errors and it's going to come home with a win as brady myers has blown up no he's crashed what on earth has happened there it's a it was a spin he spun brady myers just losing it in the s's looks like he um the steering at, yeah had the steering at a bit of an angle too but Corey Ott crosses the line to take victory in his 22. Absolutely excellent result. And to be sure, Lattimore, Myers, and Ott all elected to take double points on that one. So it could have gone any way. But Ott is going to come out with the best points haul from that heat. Yeah, definitely will. And he'll be pretty stoked to have won it as well. Yeah, certainly. Pro Force Racing taking the win there in Heat 22. That will be something to tell the boys back on uh, on Discord, for sure. But we wind down Heat 22 and gear up for Heat 23. Another excellent matchup here. We've got Mitchell McLeod from Gate 1, Bo Albert from Gate 2, Brenton Hobson in Gate 3, starting from Gate 4, Thomas McMillan. This is one hell of a matchup once again. So Mitch McLeod making his way around the outlap, as is McMillan, Hobson, and Albert, and I don't know couple of thoughts on that last heat if if i may editorialize my commentary a bit i i think i kind of disagree with the steward's decision to remove emily jones i don't think that was really fair because like she she did go off the track and while she did make contact with myers she she lost it on her own and i don't think she was very much at fault there at all so i'm not sure how the stewards arrived at that decision but hey i i guess the decision is final so heat 23 lined up on the grid now waiting for approval from race control to begin mcleod albert hobson and mcmillan any of these guys could conceivably win this race. A lot Indeed, of talent they right there. They're away. And something like McMahon's got a great start over McLeod. Albert's yeah, been left for dead. Yeah. Looks like McLeod and Hobson will go side by side and turn one. McMillan covers them on the inside. Oh, Hobson's going to go around the outside of oh, yeah. McLeod. But once again, 
they're going to probably get... Whoa, hold on a minute. That was an aggressive turn in from McLeod. Bit of contact there, but he's backed out of it, and they both managed to keep going. That was very lucky. Certainly was, and now McLeod's got Bo Albert all over the back of his rear bumper. Very close. Oh, McMillan! Oh, McMillan! Oh my goodness, McMillan on the grass! Oh, that was a big moment. Yeah, huge, but he's managed to recover, and that's brought Hobson Hobson's right back come, into this. Have forward. a look in the background. Oh, Albert side by side by side. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, McLeod's going to try. Oh, that's very late on the break. Yep, McLeod maintains third. Can Albert try and get a move on him? No, Albert's going to take his joker, as is McMillan and Hobson. So McLeod is left out in the lead. McMillan's all over the back of Hobson here. Okay, so three cars going through the Joker. Bit of a heart-stopping moment, but they've all managed to get through. No, with a big yeah. cut across the corner there. Ooh. I think all three of them got a bit airborne. They're all pushing really hard. They all want this. McMillan once again oh, taking no, that no. outside line. Oh, that's a bit of a side as well. <laughs> He'd probably do well to stick a little bit more to the right through that turn to avoid any incidents like that in the future. They come down into the chicane. And they stay line astern, so... Oh, McMillan a bit more sideways. Oh, boy. This race could go any way. Quite literally. McLeod has to use his double points here, so he'll be wanting victory. That's why he's decided to stay out until the last possible moment. All three of these guys will be holding each other up. This will give McLeod a bit of an advantage here. Yeah, well, definitely. And now McMillan's all over the rear end of Hobson here, so I'm not going to be surprised if we see him move shortly. Hopefully, yeah. McMillan doesn't run too wide to the sweeper here, but... Oh, Hobson oversteer. Just a little... Looks like one's got a bit of a run here. Yeah, or might this be a move? Oh, Hobson's going to cover. Hobson, quite aggressive into the chicane, but McLeod taking his joker. And this is the moment of truth. Will this be enough for McLeod to take victory? I somehow doubt it. Not quite. He's going to slot into third, I believe. Oh, no, Bo Albert's actually got him as well. Yeah, so unfortunately that ploy from McLeod did not work. So Hobson in the lead, but McMillan right on his tail. And Bo Albert there to make up for any mistake. Certainly. Now, remember what happened with McMillan last time he made a move on someone at the chicane? Quite work out in the second phase. Oh, oh. my God, it's got. It's going to pop through the cards here. Oh my goodness, this is great. But I think I'm. Oh, Albert. Albert's going to have a go here. Oh, McMillan all the way over to the right. Albert is. squeezing through on the inside. Have a look at McMillan oh, trying to defend against Albert, woman. just shutting the door. Brenton Hobson. Oh, oh no, McMillan. That done it again. Hobson's going to take. Oh, here we go. Oh, Albert's going to go side by side. He's going to take second. Oh, here we go. It's side by side. Oh, my, oh, McLeod's possibly going to get involved. Oh, just a bit. And that is the spectacular finish if I ever saw one. Congratulations to Brenton Hobson on victory in Heat 23 of the West End Mazda All-Star Shootout. That was a fantastic heat. An absolutely amazing finish as well. Yeah, Bo Albert taking second right at the last corner. Fantastic job. And McMillan, well, he, he, he pushed a little bit too hard, but once again, he shows that he has the pace to really challenge for victories. Oh, well, take a little bit of a moment to catch our breath after that as Heat 23 winds down.
Heat 24 is next up. Gate 1, Sam Blacklock. Gate 2, Wayne Burke. Gate 3, Joseph Fabian. And Gate 4, Jake Maloney. Another even matchup in this final leg of preliminary heats. And at this point, it's anyone's game, really, isn't it, Cam? Joseph Fabian, he's he's shown potential. Feel as though it's going to be an even match between Blacklock and Maloney at the very least. Yeah, but you can't can't really discount Burke as he's not done too bad so far tonight. Yeah, for sure. Well, lining up now on the grid will be Heat 24. It looks like they've all come out roughly at the same time as each other, so this should be a very quick setup for this Heat. Blacklock all the way on the inside. But, um... Tell you what, it, it should be advantage Maloney if he can get that shift right. We'll see in a couple of seconds. They all get a pretty good start. Looks like Blacklock is the one that has lost out the most, though. Oh, Cam, where have we seen this before? Three wide into turn one. Almost. Oh, no. oh Maloney's going to go around the outside there. Outside line seems to... Oh, oh Blacklock oh. with a bit of contact with Fabian. Oh, and Blacklock already signed oh, here we go. inside there. And Burke, what on earth? Blacklock, wow! Absolutely putting his foot down and saying, no, I will not. <laughs> I will not finish in fourth place in this. But unfortunately for Joseph Fabian, uh, it seems that he's lost quite a bit of ground. So he's got damage as well. On, on the rear wheel on the right-hand side, it looks like he's having quite a bit of trouble keeping that car in a straight line. So unfortunate yeah, that, for Joseph. Yeah, that's unfortunately just due to the contact that he had with Blacklock through turn one unfortunately probably making contact with Blacklock's car in turn one is what set him off there but it uh, looks like Burke and Maloney have taken the Joker here and look at how close they are through the Joker Burke's got a bit of a run on Maloney you can't really pass through the Joker though so it's going to be interesting they're going to come out just behind Joseph Fabian who is not having the best of times with his car. It looks like Fabian is right into the wall. That's a real shame for Fabian. Definitely not how you want to end your preliminaries. Indeed. Well, Sam Blacklock out in the lead at the moment. I think it would probably be the right thing to predict for him to go for the Joker on the last lap. Yes. So out he goes there. But Maloney and Burke, they're still not quite done with each other yet. No, they're not. They're still pretty close with each other at the moment. Tell you what, Maloney looks like he's gapping Burke a bit, though. Hmm. I don't know how this is going to turn out. <laughs> Once again, it's going to come down to the final Joker. Burke, <laughs> really pushing hard there. So, there goes Sam Blacklock into the Joker. Now, where is he going to come out? Looks like both of them might get him. Maloney's got him. Okay. 
about Burke. It's going to be close. Yeah, Burke's got him. Well, only just so. Yeah, I don't think Blacklock's done with Burke here. Look. It's all over the rear end. Right oh, oh, contact. Bit of, a t bit of a love tap. Yep. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Sideways. Oh, oh there he held there. Advantage. Nothing like a bump and run. Oh, but they're both on the ground. <laughs> Here we go. Goodness. Just really cross at its best. Wow. <laughs> are we are we sure this is a tarmac racing thing? Are we sure rally cross isn't out yet? <laughs> oh wow. Well. Oh, possibly gonna look cool. It looked. Yeah, he certainly did. Oh, that's Very close. aggressive. Oh, oh he's, he's gonna... trying. Ooh, maybe an attempt at returning the favour, but Jake Maloney is going to cross the line to take victory in Heat 24. And Blackhawk's going to hold off Burke just after those last corner antics. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, that's one way to pass someone, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed, it is. Once again, another entertaining heat. I am loving the way this is finishing up. Yep, and it's only going to get better. Yep, heat 25. This is the final heat of the night in the preliminaries. Then we've got the semi-finals and the final. Gate 1, Connor McCluskey Young. Gate 2, Sean Thompson. Gate 3, Dane Warren. Gate 4, Benjamin Smith. And there's one driver there that really sticks out to me, and that is Dane Warren. Yes, I would say he's probably the favourite to win this one, I reckon. We shall see very soon. For the drivers of Heat 25 are making their way around the circuit, down the back straight. And I tell you what, if Dane Warren wins, he gets first pick of where to start in the semi finals. Because um, the points tallies from these preliminary series of heats are what decides uh, who gets first choice of um, of starting gates for the semi-finals. So Dane Warren, if he wins this, once again, he will get first pick. But he's up against drivers from three teams that have been real dark horses in the West End Mazda All-Star Shootout. Pro Force progression and race on Oz. Let's see what they can do against Dane Warren. Have a look at the start from Thompson. That's a very good start, actually, from Thompson. Smith's also got a good one as well. Hmm. So McCluskey's going to have to slot in behind here. Warren, oh, too much. Oh. Turn in. Oh. Thank goodness that wasn't Netco contact. Oh, a little bit more contact between Thompson and Smith. They slot in single file as they come into the S's. Warren right on the tail of Thompson there. A few taps, but everyone got through cleanly. So Smith leads. And Warren's got a good run here. here. And Klusky Young in the background running all the way out to the left. Have a look at Warren oh, here. He's going to go through. Late. He's going to have a oh, red hot go. Close. No, nah, Warren had to yield. Smart move. No use in ruining your race now with a poorly timed Whoa. maneuver. Whoa, hold on a minute. Goodness me. Connor McCluskey. Oh, they made contact. Oh, made contact in the Joker. And oh, my goodness. That has that's put paid to their races. And Dane Warren will not have first pick now. I don't think there's any way he can win this from here. Unless the two in front of him, in front, take each other out, which we don't even know if that's going to happen. So it's oh. all in the air as to who's going to actually win this. Yeah, it's anyone's guess right now. Well, I guess for the win now, it is Smith versus Thompson. Race on Oz versus Pro Force Racing. And Smith giving his car a little bit of a hurry up through the right hander and Thompson tiny bit of a run he has a look in the braking zone down at the chicane 
Tiny bit of oversteer from Smith on the exit of the chicane. Is Thompson going to go? They're both going to go for the Joker. So it's pretty even between them. Thompson going all four wheels off the track. <laughs> Cutting the, uh, the entry to the Joker there. Looks like they've stayed pretty even. If anything, Thompson's fallen off slightly. Dane Warren in third. And McCluskey far, far behind. And a lonely and distant fourth. Looks like he might be crabbing a little bit as well, McCluskey. Well, either way, I think it's the race almost sorted unless Sean Thompson can practice some measured aggression and Smith does less of that. <laughs> He's doing well at the moment is Smith to hold off Thompson. Dane Warren is... He's got a rocket strapped to the back end of his car, but unfortunately, I don't think that will be enough. Oh, Smith just exiting the track stage left. Oh, Thompson! Oh, there you are. Okay, well, that will have dirtied his tyres slightly. He did get a slight bit of a run from that mistake, but still, it won't be enough. Bouncing off the rev limiter under brakes. Thompson's really caught up in these last couple of corners. But Benjamin Smith coming across the line to take victory for race on Oz. An absolutely fantastic result for him and the team. Yeah, absolutely. As we now see Dane Warren just crossing the line now to take third. And Colin McCluska Young not too far behind him coming through the final corner and across the line to take fourth. Well, I tell you what, if not for McCluskey's botched move on Warren into the Joker, I believe Warren would have won that race. He would have, I reckon, and he would have been <laughs> at the top of the points table. He certainly would have, but nevertheless, that means that TTL have won the team's championship. So big congratulations to TTL Esports for their victory. Synergy Sim Racing second. And TTR finishing in third place. So that's your top three in the team's championship. That's decided. Now we move on to the semifinals. So the top eight in points are going to have their selection. Of, uh, of gates first third fifth and seventh competing in semi-final one and second fourth sixth and eighth in semi-final two so while we sort out the logistics of that would be an appropriate time to take another little break so we'll be back very very soon we hope you're enjoying the broadcast, everybody. Stay with us for the semi-finals and the final. It's not over yet. This is the All-Star Shootout 4, presented by West End Mazda on V8s Online. Back soon. West End Mazda, Australia's oldest Mazda dealer. The brilliant 2016 Mazda 2 Neo Hatch and now Mazda 2 Neo Sedan from just 16990 drive away. Amazing value. Or upgrade to the max and drive it away for only 19690. West End Mazda, 17 times Mazda Master Dealer. 590 Church Street North Parramatta and 106 Sunny Holt Road in Blacktown. See our e specials at westendmazda.com.au.
Welcome back, one and all, to the Eights Online's live broadcast of All Star Shootout 4, presented by West End Mazda. Well, we've just finished up the preliminary heats, Cameron Dance, and well, we're, we're ready to move into the semi finals. The drivers have made their selections of uh, of gates for this um, for these semi finals, the top eight in points, and oh, we've really got uh, some interesting grids coming up now. In semi one, we've got uh, gate one Hayden Dodman, gate two Dane Warren, gate three Josh Rogers, and gate four Bo Albert. You excited? Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be very very close, and it's gonna be very very competitive with. The drivers that are in these semi-finals so it's going to be some awesome racing already for sure well the uh the points that we were talking about beforehand that uh were being competed for in the preliminary heats are now erased they no longer mean anything once the drivers have selected their gates this is a complete knockout format so the top two from semi-final one are going to move forward to the final, and the top two from semi-final two will move forward into the final. And then that is going to decide the champion of the All-Star Shootout, presented by West End Mazda. So, drives making their way around for semi-final one. Dodman, Warren, Rogers, and Albert... Three incredibly skilled drivers. Sorry, four incredibly skilled drivers. Wow, I almost uh, that 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 was some that was some true foot and mouth stuff, wasn't it, Cam? It was indeed. It's very late. We've got an excuse. <laughs> but I think all four of these drivers are extremely well matched up. And any one of them has the ability to win. They have shown such. I do believe all four of these drivers have won at least one heat. In the preliminary round, so... It is a very high quality field of four we've got at the moment. So Warren, the first to take his spot. Then Rogers. Then Albert then Dodman. And they sit waiting for the all clear from race control to rev up. It has just been given. Semi-final one for the all-star shootout. That's is a way. Go. Good yep. start from Rogers and, and Dodman by the looks of it. Rogers with a great start. Yep, Albert Go lost on, out a bit. around the outside. Oh, yep. they're going to go three wide. Oh, no, 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 please. Please no. <laughs> Warren oh, yields. Slow back in. Yeah, Albert. Have and a Albert's look at Albert. Albert's going to go around the outside. Oh, Rogers is looking to try and get past oh. Dodman here. So Albert. Oh, just about contact further back between all four of them, actually. Yeah, for sure. And Albert just just chopped off the nose a little bit of, uh, of Dane Warren as they came in uh, into turn three. It looks like two battles of two forming right now. And have a look at the run Rogers has got on Dodman here. He's going to go up the inside onto the straight. He will have the outside for the chicane. Now, we've now seen... Albert's going to come under attack oh, as well. Side, side by side by side. That's the, that's it. Now both Rogers and Dodman courageous on the brakes. Oh, Warren versus oh, Albert. Oh, here we go. Not sorted out at all. They're going to go oh, side no, by side. Oh, no, here we go. Oh, nope. no, never mind. Oh, okay. So, that's, uh, that's Dodman and Albert into the pits just had to had to do a quick scan through the driver's list so i think we're a bit thankful that they actually did go for the joke because i yeah. <laughs> kind of didn't want to know what was going to happen at the end of that if they did go <laughs> side by side by side yeah don't forget warren warren has caught rogers quite a bit in the only half a lap since they crossed the start finish line now a reminder, the bottom two finishers in this heat get knocked out. So whoever finishes first and second in this race will, will move forward to the final. Lawrence, this is very racy here. 
Yes, indeed. And Warren is going to go for the Joker. This is this is pretty significant. Where's he going to come out? Oh, Warren! Nearly spotted! Oh. oh, that's put him on the back foot here. He's, He's going to bring that out. behind Bo Albert. Yep. Oh. If he hadn't had that slide, I think he would have at least had a chance of coming out alongside. But have a look at him. He's not done. He's going to get by Albert here. Yep. Albert's going to try and hold it around the outside. Oh, a little bit clumsy. Oh. They avoid any huge mistakes, though, which is good to see. Oh, Albert! Albert! Big slide! So now these guys are all... ...with a chance at some point, I believe, but... ...we'll have to wait and see. Rogers. Taking the Joker. Let's see where he comes out. Will he maintain the lead or will he lose out to Dodman? Tell you what, Warren and Albert not doing themselves any favors by going side by side through the final turn. I can oh, tell you that right now. Warren on the grass. Oh, have a look. Dodman's taking the lead. Oh. oh, Dodman and Albert side by side through turn one. Maybe they've made peace with the fact that they're not going to finish 1-2 and are just having a bit of fun. Maybe, but Rogers is all over the back of Dodman here. Certainly is. And remember, this is the decision for first and second oh! game. Rogers. Oh, he's up oh, the inside. Can... Just for contact. contact. Oh, oh there was a bit of tapping. Oh, careful. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. They've caught up. Oh my god, this could, go, this could go either way. They've only got three or four corners to go. Who's going to win? Dane Warren. Oh, Warren's, Warren's up the inside. inside. Oh, he's going to try and get it. No, he's not going to be able to do it. Rogers. Looks like it's going to hold off Dodman. Dodman might have a little bit of a run, but Rogers wins semi-final one. He gets first gate pick for the final. And Hayden Dodman gets third gate pick for the final. And unfortunately, Dane Warren and Bo Albert are out. Still fantastic driving nonetheless. And an incredibly entertaining race. Not wrong. <laughs> I'm shaking because it was that exciting. <laughs> that is that that right there was the race of the night so far. I think that's moved to the top of my list. Yeah, and it's only gonna get better. <laughs> It certainly is. Semi-final two. The drivers are exiting the pits now. Gate one is going to be Wayne Burke. Gate two is going to be Brenton Hobson. Gate three, Emily Jones. And gate four, Jake Maloney. So this is the first time all night that we've had two teammates in the same race. Burke and... Uh, wait a minute. Birken Hobson, yes. Got myself a little bit uh, confused now. So uh, the two Synergy Sim Racing teammates are going to be racing against each other in this one. And I get the feeling that the optimum result for them would be a 1-2. Get them both in the final. So they're just sedately cruising around at the moment, up to the start-finish line. Burke and Hobson, side by side on the right-hand side of the circuit. Then Emily Jones, having won all but one of her preliminary heat races. Who is going to come out on top here? We'll find out in about 30 seconds time. The all clear has been given. The revs are rising. And semi-final two of the all-star shootout is go. Good start from, I think that's on the outside and Jones as well. Yep. Is a shocker. He certainly has, and Hobson is going to slot in behind Jones. Jones! Outside! Whoa! 
Oh, hold on a minute. On here Fantastic. we go. Malay's going to possibly look. No, Jones is going to hold it around the outside. Oh, contact. there's a bit of a contact between her and Burke. Yep, that's Hobson's uh... going to go through, and now Maloney's possibly going to get through as well. Oh, oh side by yields. side, just. So that's Synergy Sim Racing 1 2 right now. Wayne Burke, all oh, struggling for rear end grip. He's lost traction. Hobson's going to go oh, through. Oh, Wayne Burke oh, on the grass. Oh, now Maloney and Emily Jones are going to come into this. Here we go. Burke's going to try and cover the inside here at the chicane. I don't know if he'll yield to Jones. He's going to try and defend. Jones is going to try and hold it. He's going to hold go side on. By side. And this has really given an advantage to Brenton Hobson. Both Synergy cars and Maloney going into the Joker lap. Jones stays out. And we've seen this same strategy from Emily Jones all night. Everyone else goes in. She stays out. And I would bet money on it that she is going to take the Joker at the last available opportunity. I would not be surprised if she did. Yeah, but have a look. The, the, these drivers are not that far apart at all, are they? Hobson taking all the track and then some, as is Maloney. Maloney versus Burke. <laughs> Looks like it's heating up. Say so Maloney's probably going to get a move done. He's looking up the inside. Yeah, there we go. He's an aggressive go dive at the break. Inside. And Burke. Oh, oh there's going to be a contact. Yep, and Burke's front end has been smashed in slightly by that. But hey, they're still continuing. Fair play. Jones stays out. And the effect that that has had is that it has um, spaced out Jones' competitors by a fair margin. So now we wait with bated breath. What is going to happen now? Maloney will have a shot at second if Jones is not able to make this Joker work. But if she does make it work, then it's going to be Maloney and Burke knocked out. Jones takes the Joker. It's going to be close. Yep, nice and clean from Emily Jones. It looks like Hobson is going to beat her. But it looks like Emily Jones is going to beat out Jake Maloney. Yes, she comes out ahead. Yes. Oh, it might be a bit close for comfort. I think Maloney is going to stay behind here. Really aggressive over the curbs is Maloney. Yeah, I think he's going to throw everything that he can possibly at it. Oh, what a big moment for Jones oh. there. Oh, careful, oh, Jones careful. is struggling to hold on to it. This is going to allow Maloney into it. Yeah, have a look at the run Maloney's got all, but he had a little bit of an oversteer moment himself. And Jones knows that she can hold the outside. Oh, Maloney, big oh, move. Oh, and there's been contact. Oh, oh, Maloney spins. Jones goes through here. Will she have a slowdown? I don't know. Probably does, and... But Burke's not going to catch her. going to get her. So Emily Jones is through to the final, as is Brenton Hobson. And I mean, that was... That was quite the aggressive dive from Maloney, but... Given the circumstances, I don't blame him. <laughs> No, I don't either. Oh boy, what a race. Well, now, Cam, we have the final. Yes, we do. And this is going to be one hell of a race. It certainly is. After, God, how long have we been live? Almost four hours now. 
four and a quarter hours. My my voice is dead. Rest in peace. Our director is dead. He's a ghost now. I'm very tired because it's about one o'clock in the morning for me now. <laughs> oh yeah, I keep forgetting you're a Kiwi, but Rogers is going for gate four. So that's a very wise choice from Rogers. Hobson is choosing gate one all the way on the right-hand side of the circuit. Dobman choosing gate two, which leaves Emily Jones to start from gate three. So here we go. As it stands, Rogers is in the best position now. And like, given that he has first choice, I don't know why you wouldn't pick gate four. Yes, clearly learnt a bit from tonight and he's definitely gone for the right choice. So hopefully he can convert and put it on top. But of course, the little gremlin that uh, we've been seeing hit drivers all night, that shift between first and second gear. These drivers have had more races than anyone else try and uh, see how um, how to combat it but under the immense amount of pressure that they're under one little mistiming of pressing a button or pulling a lever can spell certain doom for their challenge for the all-star shootout so it all comes down to this this final four lap race it's been a big night of racing cam and it's all come down to the next five minutes indeed and it's gonna probably go off like it's the fourth of july i reckon 100 percent they all make their way through the chicane up over the hill final preparations brenton hobson lines up all the way on driver's right in gate one. Hayden Dodman taking gate two. Rogers lines up in gate four. And Emily Jones of Trans Tasman Racing takes up gate three. If it is all to race control satisfaction, we'll see green flag very soon. We're away. away. Everybody with a pretty equal start, actually. Jones and Dorman, by the looks, are getting the better two. Yeah, that's the most even start we've had all night, and it's come right at the end. Jones just inching ahead, but dobman has got the inside line. Okay. Right around the outside again, which she's done all night, and she's managed to get ahead. Oh, but Rogers is going to come back on Burke here. Yep, Dobman goes through to the inside. Oh, contact oh! between Hobson and Rogers. And Ro Hobson's around. Red oh, light. Goodness. That's going to be a red light for sure. So, oh, goodness me, this is, <laughs> it's all of this build up and then, ah, so cut price racing replay on screen as we speak, we're going to take another look at that incident. So it looks to me as though, uh, I I I think I feel it was a racing incident. The director feels it was a racing incident. What about you, Cam? It it's very net Cody that incident. But honestly, given past Stewart's decisions, I feel Rogers might be in trouble here. Yeah, it's kind of like what happened earlier in the night it's yeah hard to tell it's more of a racing incident well we've gone back live still awaiting a decision and i i don't know if i swear if if if, if rogers is is kicked out after this then I think all hell's going to break loose. He's worked very hard. Well, I can see all four drivers traveling towards the grid. 
So it sounds like it's been dinged a racing incident, apparently. All right, well... I'm going to wait just a few seconds more. See if the grid spots are taken up. It looks as though they are. So we're going to have a four-car race for the final heat of the night. Take number two. We are away. We certainly oh, a are. Much better look... start from Rogers there. And XR. Yeah, oh, no, he's missed a gear. No, he's, oh, he's messed it up. Oh, and oh. contact between Dodman and, and, and Hobson. And Jones is going to go around the outside again. No, not quite this side by side. Not enough. She's not as far up enough this time. Oh, let's get in close. Oh, no, but she's actually gone around the outside and done it. Yep. So, Emily Jones leads the final of the All-Star Shootout on lap one. And behind her, look at the jostling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The final moment, and now Hobson and Rogers are going to go through. Oh, they're going to go oh. side by side, and Rogers is going to give Hobson a bit of a bump. A bump oh. kind of thing now. Rogers is boxed in here. He can't do anything here. Will Dodman go up the go for the move on Hobson? Very gradual. It's not gonna work. Yeah, it looks like Hobson's gonna hold him off. Emily Jones has is streaking away with the lead. And the, for the first time of the night, Emily Jones takes her Joker on lap one. Dodman and Hobson follow her in. This might make the difference. We haven't seen this happen before. It's entirely possible that Rogers will be able to put down some monster times and get a bit of a gap, but we don't know yet. Could quite possibly, but throughout the night we've seen all sorts happen, so it's any it's all up in the air at this point. Hobson in a bit of a battle with Dodman at the moment. Yeah. Dodman trying to get Hobson. by. Yeah, Dodman is looking really desperate to put that move on Hobson, but I feel like in the process he's lost a bit too much ground. Yeah, I think he just got a little bit too much oversteer on the entry to the sweeper, and it's cost him a little bit of time there. Hobson's actually catching Emily Jones by the looks of it, so this could actually evolve into something. Rogers has continued on. Dodman just went right across the grass at the top of the hill. So, it's all going to come down to this. In the next 40 seconds or so, Josh Rogers... Take the Joker, and then we will see what the state of play is for the final lap of the All-Star Shootout, presented by West End Mazda. Not a single peep out of any of these drivers, I'm sure. Quiet as mice. Josh Rogers going into... The pit lane to take his joker. This is There's Jones. Very close. Jones at the top of the hill. Rogers takes it. It's going to be really close here, but I think Rogers might uh, might just miss out. Only Jones is just ahead. Just ahead, and this is it, the final lap. It's Emily Jones versus Josh Rogers versus Brenton Ooh. Hobson. All three of these drivers have worked so hard all night for this one moment. Which of them they're are going to come gonna, out on top? And they're not going to leave anything on the table. And Rogers has actually got a good run here. And he's going to go side oh, by side with no. Emily Jones through the sweeper. It's going to be close. It's going to be really close. Is Rogers going to, ha going to make the outside move to end all outside moves? Or is Emily Jones going to be courageous under the brakes and take a bit of an advantage? Yes, she is. Rogers is going to hold around the oh, outside. Oh, he's he's got the inside. Got Jones Jones is around. But it's going to oh. be Josh Rogers who's going to take out the All Star Shootout number four with Brenton Hobson second. 
What an end to the night. Josh Rogers is your all-star shootout champion. Aiden Dolman's actually going to finish third as well. Emily Jones from first to fourth on the final lap. How would you be? I don't even think words can describe it. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know either. <sighs> so, us commentators absolutely lost for words right now. Just a shocking result. An incredible final lap and wow. A dramatic end to a really long night of racing. Indeed. I can, I can barely speak anymore. But that's that's it, Cam. That's it. The Indeed night it is, is done. <laughs> done what and dusted. A night. It's been a really long night for us, so I think it's about time for us to wrap up here at V8s Online. Thank you, everyone, for watching and sticking with us all the way through this four-hour-long broadcast. And a huge thanks to Clint Smith for organizing the All-Star Shootout and West End Mazda for supporting this fantastic event. And a big congratulations to Josh Rogers on taking the driver's title. And, of course, to TTL Esports for taking the team title. My God. I would, I would never have foreseen an end like that, Cam. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, I did not see that coming. That was just absolutely awesome with all the drama and everything. Yep. I mean, I'm sure that, uh, that from a driver's point of view, <laughs> there, there would have been some things to argue about, especially with regards to some stewards' decisions throughout the night. But hey, from our point of view, as spectators, we couldn't ask for more, could we? Absolutely not. It was an absolutely awesome night with some awesome racing and some unfortunate events, but yeah, it's been an absolutely awesome night in general. It certainly has, and we're very glad that you viewers have been able to join us for that. So I guess we've got nothing more to say than goodbye. My name is Rhys Gardner. Joining me in the commentary box has been Cameron Dance. A directing has been a very sick Jay Kennedy. Thank you very much to Jay for his services. You've been watching All-Star Shootout 4 presented by West End Mazda on V8s Online. We'll see you next time. Your winner, Josh Rogers. West End Mazda, Australia's oldest Mazda dealer. The brilliant 2016 Mazda 2 Neo Hatch and now Mazda 2 Neo Sedan from just 16990 drive away. Amazing value. Or upgrade to the max and drive it away for only 19690. West End Mazda, 17 times Mazda Master Dealer. 590 Church Street North Parramatta and 106 Sunny Holt Road in Blacktown. See our e-specials at westendmazda.com.au.